Hey 80s Wrestling Con, welcome back to another edition of the Monday Night Virtual Signing Series. My name's Ryan Marr, I'm your host. We're coming to you live tonight with somebody who needs no introduction hey, to... Con, All right, silence the cell phones. Thank you. Quite <laughs> upset. We're live. This is how these things happen sometimes. But anyway, even though this guy is outside of the 80s wrestling realm, which we often go to, in the 1990s... You can't talk pro wrestling without mentioning the man sitting to my left, former WCW World Television Champion, WWE Intercontinental Champion, Mark Merrow, a.k.a. Johnny B. Bad, Good a.k.a. You, Marvelous man. Mark. I there forgot that one there earlier. Good to see you, man. Good to see everybody out there tonight, man. I'm excited about being here. We'll be here for the next three hours, man, hanging out with you guys and uh, looking forward to answering a lot of questions. Right in. Ryan's going to read them off the, off the monitor here, and uh, hopefully I can get to as many as possible. Be signing a lot of pictures, man. So let me know what you want signed on your picture. If you want some inspiration, I'm ready to give it tonight. And you can go to 80sWrestlingCon.com to place those orders for Mark Merrow. Like the man said, he's going to be signing the autographs. He's going to be holding up the 8x10 to show it to you that it's authentic. He's going to give you a personal shout-out. And we always love the interactions in the chat. And, uh, I mean, you're somebody who has a lot of interaction with fans after your career has ended. I mean, you're very active on social media. And then, of course, we have Champion of Choices, which is your school assembly program. Yes. You want to tell everybody about that? Uh, this is our 15th year. We're ready to kick off our 15th year speaking at schools all over the country. And it's been crazy because it's been going all over the world. We went to uh, Russia and went to Guatemala and spoke at schools over there. But the pandemic slowed us down, so we did a lot of virtual events. And this will be our first year getting back on tour again. I can't wait to get to and have your school contact us at uh, uh, thinkpozpoz.org. And I'd love to come out and inspire your students and the staff at your school. That's It's really awesome. I remember uh, I was ring announcing on an indie show in South Jersey around 2007. And it was Tom Brandy actually had the t-shirt that yeah. said Champion of Choices. And I said, what's that? And he said, ah, oh, it's this thing that Mark Merrow's doing. And then I believe it was around that time where that video of yours went viral, where you were talking about your mother. And well, I knew that you had something big on your hands because I saw it being shared on social media by people that I knew were not wrestling fans. Right. So that's what's really amazing. And I think that people really need to check out Champion of Choices and see everything that's going on. Uh, because again, you don't have to be a wrestling fan to appreciate this man's message. I think it's something that can resonate with everybody. Absolutely. And, you know, we all go through adversity in life. And, you know, the old saying is not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up. Without life a is a blessing. And uh, I, hope to, I hope to meet some of you, you people that are watching this tonight. It's always great when someone says, I saw you on, 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 on uh, social media and I've always wanted to meet you. And uh, whether it's in an airport or a restaurant, I love meeting people. Yeah, that's great. And like you said, right now, this started out kind of during the pandemic, but it's still a, a great distraction for everything going on in the world. People still feel a little more comfortable at home at times, even as things reopen. So uh, get those orders in, 80swrestlingcon.com. You can hang out with Mark Merrow and myself for the next three hours. First up, we have Chris Giles, and uh, he wants it in silver. It's actually a gift, I guess, because it's too Ricky. You're a bad man. And speaking <laughs> of you're a bad man, here it is. Johnny B. Bad. And WCW, and that was the creation of one Mr. Oh, Dusty Rhodes, my gosh, right? Yes, it was Dusty Rhodes. I'll never forget it. The day he said to me, I was uh, I was a guy that was basically getting beat up on television for $150. Yeah. And after my match, Dusty Rhodes said to me, he goes, Hey, kid, anybody ever tell you you look like Little Richard? And I thought he was talking about a wrestler, Little Richard. Okay. So I said... I never heard of a wrestler, Little Richard. He goes, no, not the wrestler, the singer. A womp bum a loo bum a womp bum boo And I go, oh, the singer. I go, no one ever told me that. He goes, I think I got a gimmick for you. And next thing you know, Johnny B. Bad was born. So, what yeah. A, the, what uh, a blessing, man. Yeah, and the look of Little Richard, and it was uh, the take on the Chuck Berry song, Johnny B. Good, if I'm not exactly, mistaken. Exactly, exactly. And you started out as a heel. I was. I was, a, I was a bad man. A bad man. <laughs> And uh, we had the lips that would be put on... The kiss that don't miss. Yeah. The kiss. Yes. Oh, that's what it was called. All right, yes. that escaped me. The kiss Listen, that don't miss. you got to catch up with this, man. You know, I'm going to kick your booty with my tutti <laughs> Damn. Yeah, the only tutti fruity I'm familiar with is at IHOP. But anyway. <laughs> no, that was right. It was, it was the uh, kiss that don't miss. Ricky, this is awesome, man. So you want this in silver. And uh, Ricky, I'm going to be putting this on here. This is to Ricky. 
A lot of people chiming in. Mm -hmm. Stefano Chavasco, future Hall of Famer, hopefully. Rachel Gatewood, great way to give back. I guess they're talking about the assemblies there. Anthony D. Simone, hi guys, how you doing, Anthony? Good to have you back with us. Shailen Rivera says, hi, Mark. A lot of people talking about how you're looking good. And, uh, well, thank you, right. man. And Ricky, I got it right here. Ricky, you're a bad man. It's coming to you. We're sending this out to you. And uh, thank you, man, for your support. Awesome. Good stuff. Next up, we got Shailen Rivera in Staten Island, New York. To Shailen, you are precious. God bless you. Oh, Shailen. This is, uh, this is when I was a uh, wild man, Mark Merrill, when I won my first uh, belt in the WWE as the Intercontinental Champion. And I am going to, Shaylin, what a beautiful name. We're going to be talking a lot about that throughout the evening. That was a, a very uh, early storyline also for one Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yes, we Refuge. wrestled him many times, man. Yeah. Three guys I probably wrestled the most was, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about like hundreds of times, mm -hmm. was, was Triple H. And uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, because yeah. we were in WCW and WWE together, yeah. so we had you know uh, different uh, feuds in both organizations. And of course, my good friend Diamond Dallas Page, yeah. who we wrestled on more pay per use than any other wrestler. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about all those great performers tonight. And uh, I understand you still have a strong friendship with Diamond Dallas Page. Oh yeah, day. yeah. We were just on the phone last night uh, for quite a while. I'll be doing some yoga with him this when I get back home. That's great. Lots of questions and comments coming in, but don't forget, go to 80swrestlingcon.com to place those orders. Go to 80swrestlingcon.com to also check out all the great upcoming signings. Don't forget about Virtual Mania 2 this Sunday. Shaylin, I signed it just the way you wanted. God bless you. Bye-bye. All right. Next up, we got Andy Olinsky in Mount Prospect, Illinois. Silver to Andy. I C champ, and of course All that's right. the classic Intercontinental title that was brought back for a number of years and recently now, replaced. Now it's gone. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I get that. I was hoping they'd keep that for a while. So was I. And, it's, and you know, they always replace it with an ugly looking belt, right? They replaced it the first time with that purple thing that kind of looked like a big belt buckle. Now it's replaced with something else that's just not very eye pleasing. But maybe it's just the nostalgia in me that likes the old. Right. I don't know. Andy, it's on its way from one champ to another. You're awesome, man. All right, so here we have the wild man Mark Merrow, which was your WWE debut along there with Sable Sharif from Singapore. Ooh, I went from Singapore. That's to awesome. Sharif, you're a wild Hi, Sharif. man. Now, obviously, you leave WCW. Uh, you had a successful run there, I believe, what, four-time TV champ? Uh, Three-time. Three-time television champion. Always in, in, in the picture, uh, you know, U.S. heavyweight title, rivalry after ri rivalry. You leave WCW. You go to WWE. Obviously, you can't be Johnny B. Bad no, in WWE. No. So who came up with the wild man? Did they want you to be an extension of Johnny B. Bad without you know calling what? you that? Or? At first, it was thought I could do some type of... Um, similar character mm -hmm. like Johnny B. Bad, but because of the Monday Night Wars and everything mm -hmm. going on and uh, different guys going to different organizations, there was a lot of suing going on, so they decided to go with something totally different. And uh, WWE, I had a meeting with the creative and they came up with the, this character, Wild Man Mark Merrill, mm -hmm. which was, you know, very unusual for me going from a flamboyant character like Johnny B. Bad to this. I don't know, guy from the jungle, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah. but it, was, uh, it was a little difficult at first, but uh, all in all, you know, look at it, all the different paths in life, and you, you, know, wind up, you, you, you end up where you are today, and I couldn't be more blessed, and all the paths I've taken, good or bad, have led to right where I am today. Now, going back to when Dusty gave you the Johnny B. Bad gimmick because you looked like Little Richard, which was even mentioned in the theme song that you looked just like Little Richard, uh, but you hadn't heard of Little Richard prior to that, so did you have to go back and study tapes of Little Richard performances, music videos? Well, I, I knew who the singer Little Richard was. I oh, remember okay. what, I thought he was talking about a wrestler when he oh, first asked okay. me that, but I knew who he was, but I, I was not real familiar with, yeah. with it, but I did go back and research, and, mm. and that's where we came with the name Johnny B. Bad because of the song uh, uh, Chuck Berry, I believe. Yeah, was Johnny B. Good. Johnny B. Good. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted to make it, and, I, and DDP was the one that started with a, a B A double D. I love he it. always would say that. So I said to him, "Hey, well, how about me using that name, Johnny B. Bad?" He loved it. So That's and then I went to Dusty because a lot of people don't know this, but the, the name that Dusty actually gave me when I was 
before Johnny B. Babby, when he first thought of this character, <laughs> he said, what do you think of the name Precious? I said, ooh. <laughs> I said, Dustin, let me, let me just think about that for a day or so. And I, I couldn't sleep that night. I go, I don't want to be called Precious. You yeah. know? So I started thinking of songs and stuff back in that era, you know, the, the, in the 50s. And that, that of course, Johnny B. Good stuck up, but I knew it was a bad guy, so that's when I remember DDP always saying B A W D. Yeah, yeah. Bad, you that's know? Great. And that's how Johnny B. Bad was born. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, you were definitely able to adapt, and then it carried over with the wild man Mark Merrow. Different, but still the same kind of eccentric out there character, so that's a lot of fun. Next up, we got Jeremiah Love in silver. He just wants the signature on the Intercontinental title you got photo. It. Oh, thank you. Uh, being handed my phone stand that makes things much easier appreciate it all right uh, here you go Jeremiah Jeremiah love now Aaron Karpenka uh, brings up something that we were going to get to at some point as well he's asking to hear about your amateur boxing career yeah. you were a golden gloves champion I, I won the golden glove here in New York but I also won the uh, gold medal in the Empire State Games if you remember that back in the day they had okay, the Empire yeah. State Games in New York I won the gold medal there but I was a, um, a, a four time New York State champion in boxing okay and then what you, I believe I remember reading that you were trying to go pro but you suffered an injury I did. Two weeks before my first pro fight, I, I, I had a, a five-fight contract we were negotiating with, with ESPN. Mm -hmm. And oh my, I, just got, I just got back from the USA boxing team. I was mm -hmm. in uh, Colorado Springs with the U.S. team. And I decided to come back, and um, the, the Olympics were boycotted in 80. Mm -hmm. So I decided to turn professional. And two weeks before my first professional boxing match, I had my nose shattered in an accident. Oh. I needed reconstructive surgery, and the doctor said it would be almost a year before I could really come back and start having full contact again. And that time off, and I share this in all my testimonies, and especially at school, is I started really, you know, we become who we surround ourselves with. And I started hanging out with some really suspect friends, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and I'm not pointing my finger at blame anybody because, it was, you know, we make our own choices yeah. in life. And I started making some really bad choices, got heavily into drugs, and it was 10 years of my life of drug addiction. Wow. So I never got to become a professional boxer. And uh, in that time off, the only job, you know, with limited high school education, I got a job digging swimming pools. Wow. And, and, and that's when I got into professional wrestling. And it's an amazing and story. it's all changed. Gavin Gray up next in Alexander, Arkansas. Silver to Gavin Gray. Hey, Gavin. How and, you doing, man? And you were trained by the great Boris Malenko. Oh, I was, man. Yep. That was a blessing. Yeah, we, we just had uh, Dean Malenko here a few weeks ago, and we were talking about how his father paved the way for so many talents, and then a year later is when you meet Dusty Rhodes. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Aaron Kropenka says, Thanks, dudes. Love 80s wrestling con signings. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you, Aaron. Keep supporting us. We'll keep being here. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in from Mark Merrow here with him till 10 o'clock. We have a live virtual auction that's going to be taking place later on tonight. Don't forget about Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday. There you go, Gray. You're, you are, Gavin, you are awesome. God bless you, my friend. Next up, Juro from Australia. A lot of international fans of uh, Mr. Merrow tonight. Silver to Juro. Juro, you know, we've been we've negotiating with Australia. Would love to come out there and speak at schools out there. I've always, I've never, you know, I've toured all over the world, and Australia is one country I've never been to, and I really hope there is an opportunity to come out to Australia and, and hopefully meet you, Juro. That would be great. Daryl Gar is wanting to know if you had more fun being Johnny B. Bad or Wild Man Mark Merrow, which was more fun. Uh, definitely Johnny B. Bad. Yeah, I yeah would so. it was just so outrageous. I mean, you can you can say anything and get away with it. Yeah. I mean, it was just like a fun character, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you can say things like uh, "I'll kick your booty with my tutti frutti," yep. or "I'm so pretty, I should have born a little girl," yeah. or yeah. <laughs> "or I love the rock and roll and strut and stroll," and Ryan, I'm here to kick your butt. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm love the rock. Uh, oh gosh, that's so yeah. long. I don't hey, know. Well, it happens. <laughs> It happens, but it doesn't matter because you wouldn't be able to say it nowadays anyway. So that's the world that we're living in. But yeah, we've got so much great stuff coming up here with Mark Merrow. Your questions, your comments, keep them coming hey, in. Hey, Tommy Fierro just came in with an announcement, which has been announced for, I believe, the last two weeks now. 
Jesse the Body Ventura for our live 80s wrestling con on May 7th, 2022 in Morristown, New Jersey at the Men in Sports Arena. If you can't make it live, we just released 100 mail order spots available for Jesse. You can get those at 80swrestlingcon.com as well. Next up, nearby Piscataway, New Jersey, we have Angie to Angie. Hey Angie, I hope you're doing great today. So there you go. If anyone else wants to know, Johnny B. Bad over Wild Man Mark Merrow in terms of more fun. Bob Love says, good evening, Mark and Ryan. Hope you're feeling better, Ryan. Yes, Bob, thank you. I'm feeling quite a bit better, but talk to me in a few weeks when summer's over. We'll see how I'm feeling. Not looking forward to another brutal Jersey winter. Angie, you're beautiful on its way. Next up again with the international orders, Jan from France. To France. Jan, wild man Mark Merrow. Hey, Jan, all the way from France. I think this is the most international orders that we've opened up with at uh, these Monday night virtual signings so far. We've had quite a bit over the last few, but I've never had this many right out the gate. You want your autograph from Mark Merrow? Go to 80wrestlingcon.com, place that order. Jan on his way to France. Next up, silver to Rich Russell, the Intercontinental Championship photo, and it says, let Mark know he played junior hockey with him. So, no, who's that? Rich Russell. Rich Russell, yeah. Hey, Rich, we played on the uh, Syracuse Stars together. Oh, wow. Played junior hockey for a couple years with Syracuse Stars. Um, one of the great memories I had in my life was playing hockey, man. Yeah. Played hockey since I was uh, 12 years old, and um, gosh, I love hockey. Hockey was my the sport I really thought was gonna be a professional. Athlete. Okay. Yeah, and um, as I think a lot of kids from Buffalo in that area probably. Yeah, we, we, right? we, were, we were close. We, we, in Buffalo, we lived near the Peace Bridge, which was you know mm -hmm. right, right there in Canada. So we had uh, played the you know against Niagara Falls and some of the great teams out there, but um, uh, it led to uh, I. I Getting a lot of penalties, yeah. and getting the fights on ice, which led to boxing. going to <laughs> boxing. <laughs> so you were involved in pretty much oh, literally man. the two most physical sports that there are, uh, or were hockey and, and boxing. It's only natural to have it progress to professional wrestling, I would think. Nunzio Asaturo says, Mark, thank you for everything, sir. Please come speak to people in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Rich, my amazing teammate, man. It is good to hear from you. I hope you and your family are doing great. And we got to have a Syracuse Stars reunion. There okay, you go. I've been saying this for a while. So, anyone out there, Mark Paulus, uh, Ken Grabeldinger, uh, uh, Fabian Hart, guys on the team that we used to play together, man, reach out. We've got to have a Syracuse Stars reunion. I love it. Sly Fitsenko in Illinois. To Sly. Sly, I love that name. WWF IC Champ. Hello to everyone that might be watching on WrestleZone.com, but if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget you can share this feed to your Facebook friends. So people could just be scrolling through Facebook tonight, getting ready to watch Monday Night Raw. All of a sudden they go, oh wow, that's Johnny B. Bad. That's Mark Merrow then they can watch the feed themselves. So share it out to all your friends. Sly on its way. All right, next up to Sean, wild man Mark Merrow, Sean McBride in Danville, Illinois. And Danville. just because we're getting a couple of questions uh, in the comments, a lot of people wanna know, are you still friends with Sable? Um, you know what, obviously we, we share a daughter together mm -hmm. and our granddaughter. And my, my daughter was just with me last week. We spent the week together and uh, had an amazing time. I saw uh, the pictures on Facebook. But you yeah. know, I mean, she's married to Brock Lesnar, and they, yeah. have, they have their own life, but yeah. uh, so we don't, we don't have, there's nothing bad though. Yeah. You know, it's just like you just move on in life and we both go on our own ways, but uh, always wish her and her husband, her family the best. And um, that's a it's very, uh, it's a very mature yeah, way of no, looking at it. And no, no hard feelings. I bet you there's a lot of people that are hearing that that could use uh, hearing something like that. Because uh, especially when there's children and grandchildren involved, it's always nice to hear. 
Larry Luttrell is asking if you could still do a flip off the top ropes, although I did see video of you doing flips <laughs> off a boat. So that, I, was, <laughs> that, was a, that was a 20-foot dock, okay? okay. And uh, I wanted to recreate the uh, moves I would do in WWE, the, the, the wild thing off the top rope and the marrow salt. So I accomplished that. I did try a double and didn't quite make it, but <laughs> Labor Day, I'm going back to that dock and I'm going to do it live on Facebook. I'm going to get my double marrow salt. I've been working at it, so check it out on Labor Day on my uh, Facebook feed, and uh, you will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, well, that I mean, at 61 years old, I can still do it. I think, at least from my recollection, you were the first person I saw in America do the shooting star press. I'm not saying you were the first. You were the first person I saw. First one in WWE. Yeah. Yes. That was, yes. Pretty, that was pretty impressive. And Brock Lesnar had to follow that. Huh. Anthony D. Simone in New York. Silver just Anthony, signature. hope you're doing good, my friend. Heather Seabolt, Mark, next time you're in Orlando and at the most magical theme park, come say hello and ask for Matthew at the Mine Train. Thank you for all train, your okay. positivity. Are you a big Disney fan? You know, I've been obviously taking yeah. my daughter and granddaughter to Disney. Um, it's, it's always a great time with mm -hmm. the family. 80swrestlingcon.com, place those orders for Mark Merrow. Also, don't forget, we got Virtual Mania 2 this Sunday. Billy Gunn, The Headbangers, Mark Henry, and D'Lo Brown. Anthony. Jumpin' Jay, co-host of the 80s Wrestling Podcast, is coming up next, right after that photo is complete. And here we go. I mean, this was the photo we were actually talking about off yeah, camera before. Uh, this this is definitely ahead of its time, to say the least. Yeah, that was uh, that was my first Black. promo shot as uh, Johnny B. Bad. Uh -huh. uh, Dusty Rhodes had me wear more makeup than I care to. Two <laughs> <laughs> J, you're a bad man. Now again, what people watching need to realize this was a different time. This was 1990, 1991. So uh, I could imagine that some of your old teammates from hockey or uh, boxing, they, they probably had some fun with you when they, they saw They did, you. yes, yeah. yes. They, they had, they, they, I was uh, the butt of many jokes. Yeah. Yep, there you go. And I, I guess it just helps you develop a thick skin over time. Jay, you're a bad man on its way. Ryan Martinez in the chat is asking, and actually this is a great question because I've heard this before, but you know, you hear this about different guys over the years. Were you the first WWF wrestler to get a guaranteed contract? I was. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. In fact, uh, I remember it was specific, specifically because um, they wanted me three years before that, and I was getting a guaranteed contract at WCW, and Vince says, I can give you an opportunity, but I can't give you a guaranteed contract. Three years go by, and now my contract is up again. And he said to me, what will it take to get you here? I go, Vince, I need a guaranteed contract. And I got that. I got a signing bonus. And uh, the other thing that I wanted was I wanted my wife to travel all over the world with me. And he gave me all three. And, of course, when, I, when he knew that my wife would be traveling with me, I said, why don't you make her my valet? And uh, that's how Sable was born. Yeah, I remember hearing the story about how they saw Sable and, and you know, you wanted to travel with her. But that is, it's got to be an interesting standpoint. And I think it probably is a testament to why you are the man that you are now. Because, again, I'm sure walking into that situation, being the first to get a guaranteed contract, there were some people that were probably a little upset. Many people that were upset, yeah. you know. And, in fact, it, because and, and at the time I was so um, aloof to that effect that people were upset at it because... It opened the door for everyone to get guaranteed contracts, yeah. you know. But it was the guys that were working on, you know, how how much how many people were at the arenas. They were paid by, um, uh, you know, the, the draw. The draw. Yeah. yeah. So it was a it was a difficult time then too because it wasn't at the peak of wrestling until the Monday Night War yeah. started, which so. weren't long after. Yes. You know. Yeah. But I'm sure you probably were used to some of that jealousy because again, you had gotten out of wrestling school. You go to the power plant. You have a year in, right? Uh, I remember my first match with w, w, or WCW as an enhancement guy was 91. I signed my contract in March of 91. Wow. So it wasn't long at all. I was yeah. only there for a few matches and uh, I got the, the big break. Uh, so a lot of good things happened very, fairly quickly for me. And, uh, you know, was Pro Wrestling Illustrated Rookie of the Year. Next mm -hmm. year I was Most Improved Wrestler. 
uh, you know, first guaranteed contract. Uh, there was a there was a lot of firsts that I had. You yeah. know, first one to do a, a shooting star press, and first one to do a Merrill salt. Yeah, which was an incredible move. Definitely right? uh, an incredible move. And again, so you were able to blend the personality with the in ring style uh, that is you know pretty much common nowadays. Back then, again, it was still the land of the giants and whatnot. Right. So you were one of the first guys that had personality that could also get in there and go. So uh, it's just amazing when you think about that. When you, especially from that era, so many guys came from the territory. So many guys had been in 15 years, they got picked up by Vince McMahon. Here you are, you go into WCW, Dusty Rhodes, a legend, likes you. Yeah. You're off to the races, and then you're the first with a guaranteed contract in WWE. It's just really impressive to think about it. Next up, we got Matt Stevens in South Carolina. To Matt, you're a bad man. Hello, Matt. Hope you're doing well today. Shailen Rivera says, Mark Merrow, has anyone told you your first promo photo reminds me of Adrian Street? Who? <laughs> All right, Matt. Hope you're doing good, my friends. On its way. Charles Landon Renault. Sorry, I probably butchered your last name, Charles. Mark Merrow, did you like working in the ring with Dustin Runnels, a.k.a. Goldust? I'd imagine that was probably pretty special. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, I, I, here's I mean, a quick story about that was the first time I ever did a wild thing, which is a shooting star mm -hmm. press. I've never done it on a person before. Um, I, when I was a kid, I'd do it off diving boards. You okay. know? That's why I was always uh, doing crazy flips. I was never like a diver, but I would just yeah. do crazy stuff. So um, it was SummerSlam. And I was wrestling uh, Goldust at SummerSlam, and I said to Dustin, I said, you know, before the match, uh, obviously we get there real early during the day, like at one o'clock in the afternoon. I took him out to the ring. I said, I want to try a new move today, and he goes, well, What is it? I go, Well, it's like an inverted flip. He goes, Well, how do you land? I go, Well, you're going to be laying flat, and mm -hmm. I'm going to land on my knees and my hands. Our chests are going to hit each other. Mm -hmm. And he said, Just go for it. Wow. <laughs> he didn't even like, you know, like worry about it and we you know now remember so now it's my turn i do a samoan drop in the corner i go to the climb the top rope and here i am at SummerSlam, pay-per-view you know sold out at, at, uh, in indianapolis and i'm standing up there going oh my gosh i have never done this before on a person wow i've done it on a on a palm of horse and a crash pad but yeah. never on a person and i'm just throwing myself up there in the air and landing at him and it was just amazing that's you know, awesome that i was able to nail it that is great. Next up, we got Colt Campbell in Pennsylvania. So there you go, Charles. Hey, Colt. There's the answer to your question. And I'm sure there was also a special bond, too, because, you know, you had such a uh, fond spot for his father. Who? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I got to tell you, um, Ryan, that probably this is the greatest memories I have in wrestling was working with Dusty Rhodes uh, before my matches mm -hmm. as him teaching me how to become Johnny B. Bad. That's great. And he'd say, walk like this, talk like this. You know, he was so flamboyant. Yeah, yeah. We get so, you know, and I remember the first time he said to me, I want you to walk up that microphone and I want you to look in that, 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 that camera and you say, I'm so pretty, I should be more than a little gal. <laughs> and so now I try it and, and I go, I'm so pretty, I should be He goes, no, he goes, you gotta do it like this. I'm so pretty, and he kept doing it over, and we got laughing so hard. I remember he hugged me, and we were laughing, you know, because I couldn't do it like he wanted it to, but then when I finally got it, he just busted out laughing. So do you so. think it was him who broke you out of the shell? Because, again, here you yeah, are, I mean, hockey player, uh, boxer. Football player. Uh, you know, you know it, it, yes, it was a... If it, it was, wasn't Dusty Rose, nobody else would have been able to talk you into having that much fun. Being that flamboyant and that charismatic and that... With the feminine overtones, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> yeah, very yeah. different, you know. Um, a quick story was when my, my dad uh, was a detective and he had a, a lot of his friends were police officers mm -hmm. and stuff. So my dad goes and gets the pay-per-view for the first time I'm going to oh. walk out there now. Now this is the time I have to walk with the microphone and say, I'm so pretty, I should be born a little girl. Now, these are the same police officers that would go to my boxing matches and see me knocking out people. Yeah, right? yeah. And here I come walking out, <laughs> looking like this. That's awesome. And the whole room is silent, you know? And uh, my dad said, uh, hey, hey, at least he's making good money. <laughs> <laughs> and how ironic is it that you then go on to wrestle in WWF with Dustin Rhodes, Goldust, yes. who took you know took it to another level uh, a whole other unbelievable level. 
And, you know, again, his character in WCW, he was the complete opposite of his father. He was the natural. He went out there, he did business, great worker, loved watching his matches. But to see that 360, so it's really amazing how it all came full circle. Next up, we got Don Simmons in St. Louis, Missouri. Of course, St. Louis, great wrestling city. To Don in black. Keep those questions and comments coming in. Cindy Dos Anos, Mark Merrow, you are aging so well. Time has been kind to you. You oh, look great. Thank you. You know, I, I got to tell you, one of the things I do is I, I really try to eat properly. You know, we put it, what you put in your body is so important. It you is. Know? You know, I often compare it to like if you had a Ferrari, you know, you, you put the best gas in it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if gas was $10 a gallon, you go, I got to fill up my cars, got to have the best gas, yeah. you know? Man, this is your Ferrari for life. Yeah. And so I really try to treat my body. I'm more of a Pinto, but <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm upgrading. No, but it is true because I, I lost 53 pounds during the pandemic with intermittent fasting. Yes. And then yeah, there you, go. you get yourself to a point where. You go, oh, you know what? I can't wait to have that McDonald's, you know, double quarter pounder, and I'm going to hit my 16 hours. But then you eat it, and I'm going, oh my God, how did I used to do this two or three times a week? Yeah. You know, and then you naturally want to go for healthier foods. Now, occasionally there are days like I'll have pizza every once in a blue moon, whatever, because I still enjoy some garbage food every once in a while. But you're, it is so true. I, I always, I heard it for so many years, and I cast it aside, and then I saw the results of it. And I go, all right, maybe I'll stick with this for a little while. Now, so. just to reiterate what you just said was that, um, you know, I eat all organic, yeah. and, and I eat really healthy all the time. And they told me tonight that they're going to have food at the hotel before our signing. So, of course, I'm here hours early. And um, you guys had nothing but pizza. Yeah. <laughs> so I had, like, three slices of pizza. So for some reason... <laughs> if Johnny B. Bad, Marvelous Mark Merrill, Wild Man Mark Merrill does not show up ever again, it's because I was killed by Bobby Rydell at my autograph signing, okay? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, actually, we have a catering manager here at 80s Wrestling Con, and, you know, he gets pretty lackadaisical after a while. In fact, he took off a week, and we had chicken. So I don't know. I'm just well, saying. Well, that pizza was very good. <laughs> Wherever the pizza it, came from tonight it was, it was really pizza. good. It was very good pizza indeed. Another international order, Steve Wilde in the UK. To Steve, you're a bad oh, man. Oh, Steve, I love going over to the UK. Been over there so many times, man. Wrestled at some of the biggest arenas in, in the UK, especially Wembley. It's been an incredible time over there. Yeah, I, I, and that's what I really love about you know doing this uh, these signings over the last year. I, so many people have reached out on my Instagram. You can follow at Ryan Mar Comedy, Ryan M A H E R Comedy. They hit me up on Facebook, and it's great to be able to engage with wrestling fans from all over the world because they even expose you to stuff that you might not be familiar with. I have people that send me clips from uh, you know Bobby Heenan promos that were only shown in the UK. Wow. You know, and it's 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 really cool to catch up with that. Oh, Steve, on its way. And now we have Ryan Flannery in Roseville, Michigan. To Ryan, and this was another favorite quote of mine, I'm so outrageous, it's Ooh, contagious. Yeah. Good times. Oh, interesting question. Heather Seabolt says, Matthew from the Mine Train wants to know if there could be a return of Johnny B. Bad in AEW. And wow, you, watch you know, AEW? I can tell you, at 61 years old, um, I never say never. You know, I watched my buddy Diamond Dale's page too. This went out there and had a match. I said, you know, we are me and DDP are probably the most competitive friends you have ever met in your life. We're always having like push-up contests. We're always doing something crazy. So when I saw him do that, I said, you know what? Maybe there's one more match left in the old Johnny B. Bad. You certainly, you never you know. certainly look the part. Never say never. I got to be honest, when AEW first started, I was on board. I was a, I was a fan. I was excited for it. And then they kind of lost me. But I got to tell you, the last six, seven weeks, I'm hooked. You know, unfortunately, I'm working live on Wednesday nights, so I can't watch as it happens. But I'll get, like, a text from somebody being like, did you see this? And then I throw it on, and I'm like, wow, this is, this is pretty exciting stuff. So AEW definitely has my attention. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan, not just with WWE and AEW, but, of course, these 80s wrestling con signings. There you go, Ryan. It's, I'm so outrageous, it's contagious. Love it. Next up, Eric mm. Kuntz in Eagle Point, Oregon. Mm. To Eric, I'm right. a bad man. Eric, a lot of people don't know this, but my middle name is Eric, spelled just like yours, E-R-I-C. That is awesome. 
Rye Mullis with a great question. You were one of my favorite inspirations as a kid. Did you make your own gear, or was that in-house? No, that was a... Uh, um uh, Sandra, who now works with AEW, and she worked with WWE, oh. she was the first one to make Johnny B. Bad uh, costumes, That's and that awesome. led to her now making everybody's costumes. That's so great. Yeah, she is amazing. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Peacock or WWE Network overseas actually do maybe a documentary on some of these people that you know are behind the scenes, the costume designers and stuff like that. I feel like they're unsung heroes in so many ways. There was a video that went viral recently of Batista returning at the Royal Rumble and his boot was completely busted. And seconds before he ran out for his return, they had the seamstress there sewing the boot yeah. together while it was on his foot. It would be nice if they could feature some of those people. Yeah, Sandra Gray is the, the architect behind the Johnny B. Bad. And you know, what's funny was, um, and, and I show this with a lot of new wrestlers, is that when I first became Johnny B. Bad, um, I mean, this is back in 1991. My first contract was like, it was less than $100,000, you know, it was really, like, Seventy-five or eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and I took that money that I made my first year and I, I invested it into my own costumes, uh, the Bad Blaster, the, yeah. the Frisbees, the Kiss that Don't Miss. I had all this stuff made. Now I'm not making much money, but I'm I'm and reinvesting in myself. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, man, that when you have no idea the power you give yourself when you believe in you. And I believed in my character, I believed in, the, in what, they, what the opportunity I had, I did not want to go by the wayside. Now here's the good news. They seen how well the character was getting over with the investment I made in myself, and they started giving me $100,000 a year towards costuming and wow. on top of my salary, which doubled the next year anyways. Yeah. So, so it, was a, it was a great time. So then were you putting jewelry in the bad blaster and shooting it <laughs> off? No, but that, that, is, that is crazy to think about, because I, I think a lot of people don't realize that. I think they think that it's just all, okay, here's all your stuff. No, you are investing yes. all that money. And Johnny B. Bad, because of the flamboyance and the outrageousness, you couldn't really always wear the same thing multiple no, times. It's no. not like you could go and go, all right, you know, three weeks of TV, all right, here's one pair of trunks. No, you're Johnny B. Bad. You I, I, to... I mean, I would have special capes made like when I was in Philadelphia yeah. or, or different towns. I would have tape, uh, capes made that represented that, that particular city. That's awesome. That's so cool. Next up, we got Brian Gowron in my hometown of North Bergen, New Jersey. Black to Brian. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Larry Luttrell with an interesting question. Did you have to get your high-flying wrestling moves approved from management before you could do them in the ring? Because I'm thinking back to that era of WCW with Bill Watts. There was no throwing over the top yes, rope. Yes, that, that was a whole different era, though. Okay. You know, in fact, it's so funny. Um, I just had a big party for my for my birthday that DDP was there, and Eric Watts came, too. Oh, okay. Um, and we had such a great time. And we were talking about how his dad implemented all these new rules, you know? Yeah. Uh, take away the mats outside and no, and nothing off the top rope. And it really weighed on a lot of guys, you know, mm -hmm. that like to do high-flying moves. And, you know, especially the Johnny Dead character. I was a big sunset flip yeah, guy yeah. back then, you know? So, uh, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the best of times back then. There was a lot of animosity, and, and Eric felt it, because here he is, one of the boys, but his dad was the guy that was in implementing all these rules. So yeah. we were talking about how it affected him too. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely an interesting time. And I always, I was a fan of Eric Watts. I liked him as a kid, and I, I feel like he kind of, you know, got a raw deal there because everybody was against him and accusing him of nepotism. But the kid could work. I remember that feud with Arn Anderson was a lot of fun to watch. I, I tell you, not only that, but he is a. Uh... He is one of the most funny storytellers. Oh, if you ever sit with this guy, he, whether no matter what party I'm at, if Eric Watts is there, he's always like just a life of the party type. That's guy. awesome. Yeah, good That's guy. That's awesome. And next up, we have our friend Annie Spivey in Marion, South Carolina. To Annie. Hi, Annie. Hope you're doing well. Frank Lierdo wants to know, uh, Mark, did you ever wrestle beautiful Bobby Eaton? Oh WCW? my gosh, Rest so many times. You know, a uh, quick story about Bobby was Please. obviously, everyone knows what a great person he was. Not just great wrestler, like probably one of the best, but a great person. When I first got to WCW, I was so green. I mean, I didn't. Arn Anderson said <laughs> he didn't know the difference between a, a wrist lock and a wrist watch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and so they put me with guys that could really teach me. And Bobby Eaton was one of the guys they had me work on the road with that really taught me and worked with me. But 
probably one of the nicest. And he, you know, no one ever could say a bad word about Bobby. No. He just was, he was beloved in our business and and truly missed. And one of the greatest workers out there, one of the greatest workers I've ever even wrestled. Yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting him when I did the uh, the roast of Jim Cornette in 2010, and I had done two previous roasts, one for Iron Sheik and one for Terry Funk. And at the Jim Cornette roast, you know, you always got nervous going in as a comic to those situations because a lot of wrestlers don't understand what a roast is, right? right? So, you know, we went in, and Bobby Eaton was one of the first guys to come up and say, hey, I watched your DVD from the last year. I, I enjoyed what you did, and that made me feel immediately at ease. Because I said to him, I said, I hope you feel the same way after I make fun of you. <laughs> and he goes, we will. So uh, rest in peace, Bobby Eaton, and uh, my condolences to friends, family, and colleagues all over. Next up, we have Sissy Hall to Sissy. You're a bad woman. Ooh, I like that, Sissy. There you go. A nice little spin on it. Get those orders in at 80swrestlingcon.com. Don't forget Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday, but tonight it's all about Mark Merrow. We're here with him till 10 p.m. We have that live virtual auction coming up later on tonight. Lots of cool items up for grabs. Mr. Merrill will be signing everything, but tonight, share that on your Facebook feed, this link, and let everybody know that we're here with Mark Merrow and they can get their autograph. Sissy, you're a bad woman on its way. All right, next up, Kent Graham in Tennessee to Kent. I'm Tennessee. a bad man. You're a bad man. Dylan Musella, look at that. He's trying to do some negotiation from the outside. You should come to the Wrestling Collector Store for a signing in Stockholm, New Jersey. I like that. Also, guys, uh, direct all your emails for inquiries about the signings to 80swrestlingcon.com. Uh, don't private message me. You can private message me and say what's up or talk about the weather, sports, or wrestling. That's great. Anytime you can do that. But business stuff goes right to 80swrestlingcon.com. I'm just here to host. Next up, Cliff Rollins in Rockaway, New Jersey. Black to Cliff. Lots and lots of questions are coming in about this one particular topic, so my apologies if I don't shout out your name, because about seven or eight of you have asked about it already. Your thoughts on being involved with the Brawl for All, oh my gosh, and sure. did everybody collectively agree that it was a horrible idea in the beginning, or was there some optimism that, hey, maybe we can work something out here? You know, it was one of those things where... Um, it, it was a it was a bad idea because when you well obviously looking back on it now you see how many guys that got yeah. seriously hurt yeah. in it you know um, it was um, I, you know, I don't know I mean, what can you say about it it was uh, one of those things where you know not just not a good idea and, and here's and, and looking back on I was a teenager when it happened and I remember. Like, is yeah. it real or is it, is, well, yeah, like, it so, weird, you and, know? And, and people, you know, wrestling's always had its detractors, right? No matter what. People that don't like wrestling just don't like wrestling. So you would try to explain to them the concept of the Brawl for All and go, no, 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 you don't understand. This is real. And they'd be like, yeah, okay, sure. So it wasn't even convincing enough yeah. for people to believe it was real when it was. And there were just a lot of things that didn't make sense. Like, okay, we're going to have boxing gloves on, but allow takedowns. It was just yeah. this whole, yeah. you know, so is it a boxing match or is it a Greco-Roman wrestling match with these gloves on that inhibit you from grabbing? It was just a mess to begin with. And again, this is why sometimes evolution and progress are good, because that would never fly today. No. <laughs> it's not even entertaining to watch. No. You know? I mean, I, and when you watch MMA, I mean, yeah, obviously, it's, it's so technical and yeah. scientific and... And anything can happen, but with with that, with those big gloves on, you can't really hold on to the guy. And, no. and then once you take him down, you got to let him right back up. You yeah. Know? So it, it was a, it was just a bad idea. Yeah, and and I think nobody in the end really got the worst of it more than poor Bart Gunn. I mean, <sighs> and, and you know, here's a guy that, that was touted as being one of the toughest guys, and all of a sudden you get in there with a a boxer like Butterbean. Yeah who, you know, I've sparred with and worked with, yeah. and it hits like a mule, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, that was, uh, it was definitely, even as a teenager watching that, it was uncomfortable to see. So, Rich Melber in New Jersey, too rich, one-time IC champ, marvelous Mark Merrow. No, it's black. You want some black? Yep. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be switching to red for the next couple. I'm just scrolling up to see if there's anything that I've missed that we haven't covered. Again, guys, 
If you ask a question and it doesn't get asked, we may have covered it already. We've been here since seven o'clock. We're gonna be here till around 10 o'clock tonight. But if your question's already been asked, don't worry about it. You go to 80swrestlingcon.com in the next couple days, this full signing will be available for you to watch. So keep those questions and comments coming. Any memories about Mr. Merrill's career? Don't forget, there's lots of ground to cover. We got Johnny B. Bad, Wild Man Mark Merrill, Marvelous Mark Merrill. Nunzio Asaturo in St. Paul, North Carolina. To Nunzio, you're a bad this is man. In red, I believe, right? <laughs> Linda Fierro making me laugh in the chat. <laughs> Jim Taylor asking a question that I'm pretty sure you might remember. Do you remember how the injury happened as Wildman that made you come back later on as Marvelous Mark Merrow? I believe it was an ACL tear, right? It was. I was in a, in a three-way match for the Intercontinental title against uh, Triple H and Goldust. It was at the Montreal Forum. I'll never forget it. And I uh, had Triple H on the ground in the ring, and I was using the top ropes to stomp him. And I wanted to do this really big stuff, so I jump up in the air, oh. and when I land, my leg bent backwards, my 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 left my left knee, and I remember just thinking, I just blew out my knee. Oh. I had a silly move. It wasn't even yeah, nothing yeah. that was spectacular. It's usually how it happens. It's and and uh, uh, and, and we had this whole sequence of things that had to happen in the ring for the winner, and I said to him, my wife blew out my knee. So I had to leave the match, and Goldust and Triple H had to finish it, but you know, we all knew what happened, so yeah. the referee had to come back, and he actually had to help me. I couldn't even walk on it. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was terrible. Yeah, no, I, uh, I remember then you came back as Marvelous Mark Merrow. You had the short hair, the boxing look, and the TKO. So uh, you can always tell when an injury like that happens and guys start to adjust their style a little bit. Yeah, you didn't was, want to go through that It again. wasn't going to be the high-flying stuff anymore. You yeah, know? I can't blame you for that. Heather Siebold, who's been very active in the chat tonight from Davenport, Florida. To hey, Matthew. Heather. To Matthew, congrats on being sober for two years. Red. Oh, that's awesome. Definitely a great accomplishment. Don't forget, you can pre-order now for Jesse the Body Ventura. Only 100 spots available, 80swrestlingcon.com. You'll also get to check out all the great upcoming virtual signings. Don't forget, Jesse Ventura is going to be in person when we return at the Menon Sports Arena on May 7th, 2022. But get those orders in because those mail-in spots are gonna fly. Tracy Velez says, Mark, you don't look the same. Well, I'd hate for you to find a picture of me from 1999, Tracy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. Matthew, I want to congratulate you on being sober for two years. You know, um, I had problems with drugs myself. In 2003 was the last time I did drugs, so I am uh, 18 years clean wow. now. And um, two years, I, it's uh, it's just amazing. You're, you got your whole life ahead of you, you know. Um, yesterday was the tomb and today is the womb, man. The rest of your life will be the best of your life. God bless you, my friend. That's awesome. Another one for Jumpin' Jay. This one's Jumpin in Jay. red, 2J. Yeah, I want to uh, personally, and I feel like after you know what you just shared with Matthew there, this would be the time to do it. I want to personally acknowledge and give you some credit because uh, back when the Chris Benoit tragedy took place, you were one of the wrestlers that went on various news programs and gave your take and you were talking about anabolic steroids and I believe you were on Nancy Grace and Fox News and a bunch of different channels. And regardless of whether people agree, there's still debate amongst people much more qualified to talk about it than I am about anabolic steroids nowadays. But we all can agree that when you're traveling down the road of abusing drugs, bad things are gonna probably happen to you. Yes. And you received a lot of flack from former colleagues and you know fans in general that gave opinions that I feel weren't warranted, but now look at where the WWE has gone with the wellness policy yes. and things yes. like that. So I think it takes people like you to come out and share your story. You know, you weren't one of these bitter guys condemning the wrestling business. You were no, sharing your truth. And, and you know, it was actually talking about what I got away with and what I did and um, I think about the changes that happened because me and some other people spoke out on yeah. different news shows.
but today they have the, some of the strictest drug testing, like yeah. Olympic drug testing at WWE. And, and one of the greatest things that came out of that is that anyone that has ever wrestled in a WWE ring gets free drug and, and, drug and alcohol rehab if they s stumble later on in life. Uh, for example, if uh, I fell back on drugs tomorrow and was addicted and I needed rehab, WWE would pay for it for me to go to mm -hmm. rehab. And that's I mean, awesome. That's something that has saved many lives since then. So, you know, even though maybe I, I took flack for it, but you got to be proud of who's looking back at you at the mirror every day. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm so glad that, that WWE has made those changes and implemented because I think many lives have been saved. We don't see wrestlers dying young like they did back in the 90s when I was there. No, and, and the fact that this all you know took place in 2007, now social media is everywhere. 2007 is still kind of in its infancy. Yeah. So you know you needed to get out there and go on those cable news channels and let your voice be heard because back then not everybody had the voice. So kudos to you for that. Uh, I think that's something that's definitely admirable. Next up we got Joel Janicek in Nebraska in red to Joel. It has to make you feel good all these years later to see all these international orders as well as people from all different states coming in. You know, over, you retired in 2006, I believe, so 15 years. Yeah, man, it's a and cra still crazy uh, run. And you know, Joel, that's my brother's name. My best friend in the world is my brother Joel, so that's really cool. That is really cool to see. Robert Elwell, Mark, you are an inspiration. Mr. Elwell, I agree with you. He certainly is. Thank you, my friend. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. Ryan Martinez says, you've been very open about your history with drug use, etc. Did you have a rock bottom, wrestling pun not intended, did you have a rock bottom moment that led you to turning your life around? Yes, I did. And, you know, I often say when I share my story, the only thing about the bad thing about having a rock bottom was I found out there was a basement, okay? <laughs> because I went to the, the depths. You know, not only did um, uh, going through a divorce at that time in 2003 with with Sable, uh, but you know, I, I lost my 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 mother and she died at 58. I lost my little brother and sister. They both died at 21. Oh. So I've been through so many tragedies in my life, and this was like the accumulation of so many things terrible that happened in my life and and it felt like that was my rock bottom you know but it was um it was a time that I I really became spiritual and really I remember getting on my knees and just asking God to intervene in my life because I didn't want to be here no more and that's why I, I, I look at it as such a blessing because I can relate to so many students or 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 adults that I meet today that are suicidal or or are going through depression or anxiety and, and because of things that I experience, I understand it. Because you know how many times when you go through something, so it's, I know how you feel. Yeah. They have no idea what you're going through, you exactly, know? Exactly, yeah. Um, so when I come there and I say, it's, I know what you're going through, I know how you feel, I really mean it because I'm coming from a place of pain that I was once in and I'm able to help so many people through those, through those valleys in my life, you know? Through our tragedies, we find our strength and I was able to to pull myself up through my faith in God and change my life. And like I said earlier, you know, it's been 18 years since I touched a drug and it's been an incredible uh, journey since then. Yeah, and we touched a little bit earlier on the video that went viral. You were talking about losing your mother and, uh, you know, as a self-professed uh, mama's boy, I'm still very lucky to have my mother with me. I feel in, in the 20s, you don't admit to being a mama's boy, but then <laughs> when you're in your late 30s, if you're still you fortunate to have your mother, you acknowledge it every chance you get. That video going viral, I think I shared with you off camera that I knew that that was a big hit when I saw non-wrestling fans sharing it. When did you realize, like, wow, this is really touching a lot of people? Well, Ryan, I don't know if you know this, but um, back then I, I lived in um, Orlando, Florida, and mm -hmm. whenever I, I did schools in the Atlanta area, I would often stay with my buddy DDP. And so, well, and DDP's got his whole you know yoga performance yeah, he's center. Yeah, amazing. And uh, so I was doing schools by him, and he said, Hey, bro, you mind if the guys come down and videotape you? Oh, and I so said, that was part of his? So wow. I said, sure. So they came down and videotaped me. And a week later, uh, Steve Yu, who kind of runs a DDP's thing, he's his main guy, he calls me and he says, hey, we put this video together. He goes, you mind if we share it? He goes, and DDP goes, hey, bro, you never know if I go viral. Oh, that's awesome. And I said, sure, go ahead and share it. And all of a sudden, they, you know, he calls me like a week later. He goes, hey, dude, that thing's got, you know, 100,000 of views so far. And I said, let me that's share great. it on my page. So I started sharing it on my 
And next thing you know, millions and millions of people. And so here's what we did. We went to, uh, we, we were sitting around his table. We started looking at all the major players that shared it. I mean, uh, so many celebrities. Yeah. Charlie Sheen and 50 Cent and these, these celebrities that shared it, right? We counted half a billion people have seen that video. That's unbelievable. Yeah, That's truly incredible. the definition of viral. And Diamond Dallas Page, I love that you're friends with him because I've gotten to know DDP quite a bit over the last 18 years or so, just through different wrestling endeavors. He's actually from where I live in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Okay. So he's kind of a local legend as well. But talk about a guy who was a doer. Yeah. The type of guy that gets things done. I remember one of the first times I met him, we had to pick him up at an airport for, for an autograph signing that was going to be at an indie show. And he goes, oh, I forgot to pack the world championship. And we're like, oh, well, it's okay. It's no big deal. And he's like, nope, nope, I'm going to have it overnighted. And he went through and he got it done. He's just a guy that is relentless yes. and gets things done. So I can only imagine what it's like to have breakfast with the two of you. It's probably <laughs> very healthy. No syrup, but, you know. <laughs> Tell you, funny story about DB. When we were wrestling each other, we wrestled each other, remember, hundreds of times, okay? And we would go down the power plant, and in fact, uh, today is the um, memorial for Jody Hamilton, who was a big mentor of DDP's and I's. We were going to go together, but because I had this tonight, Dallas is going by himself tonight. Um, but um, DDP would, would uh, we'd work out our matches at the power plant, and he was so intense about our matches. I mean, one, one night I was sound asleep, and my phone rings at 3 o'clock in the morning, and because we're getting ready for a pay-per-view. And I go, hello? He goes, Hey, bad man, this is DDP. Listen, when I throw you off the ropes, <laughs> are you kidding me? But that's how intense yeah. my buddy is, and, and that's why we are so competitive with each other. You know, um, I was rookie of the year, and next year he's rookie of the year. Yeah. I won most improved wrestler, he was most improved wrestler. Um, he won numerous titles, and probably one of the greatest friends, and one of the top five wrestlers I've ever worked with in my life. And, and you can't ask for two better ambassadors to the pro wrestling business than Diamond Dallas Page and yourself. You. The work that he's doing for millions of people and the work yeah. that you're doing is just incredible. Next up, we have April Moser in Pennsylvania. She wants just the signature in red. Okay. And along with WWF IC Champion 1996. Just so you know, when they mean just signature, they mean that they don't want an inscription. It doesn't mean just signature. I've learned that. After nine months of this, I'm finally learning. You proud of me, boys? Finally learning. <laughs> All right, 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. We're here with Mark Merrill till approximately 10 p.m. or so. Don't forget about Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday. Aaron Karpinka, it's really admirable how Mark right. is willing to be vulnerable. April. And openly share his highs and lows in order to help and inspire others. What a legend. And yeah, and he was doing it before it was cool to do it. Like I said, this is before social media and everything like that, and that's really how you help people. You know, people don't want to be talked down to. They want to be able to relate to somebody. Yes, so. absolutely. Next up, Matt Moran in Woodland, California. Red to Matt. All right, Matt. Vince Amato says, three years sober as a lifelong wrestling fan. You are a true inspiration. Part of me, guys, I am scrolling up to see what kind of questions or comments I missed to make sure we're trying to get to as there much as Matt. we can. All right, next up, we got Kevin Baker, once again in the UK. UK right. To Kevin, WWF superstar Mark Merrow. Did you have fun on a lot of those European oh, tours? My gosh. You know, it was, uh, it, the UK was... Um, so so much fun going over there, you know, especially the first time I went there, you know, yeah. I was uh, seeing Big Ben in the parliament and all yeah, the yeah. cool things that you see on TV and the news and everything, yeah. you know, so it was wonderful. But wrestling at Wembley and, and some of the big arenas out there was, they're, they're, they're crazy rabid oh, fans yeah. out there, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even if you just watch soccer matches, you see how crazy and rabid yes. uh, the European fans get. So a wrestling show, I can imagine, just being a wild time. Heather Siebel says, thank you for your kind words for Matthew. We are proud of him, and we are proud of you, too, for 18 years clean. Thank you for using your voice and experience to help others. J.R. Sanchez says, Mark, you are an inspiration. Funny story, I met Teddy Long at a show here in Houston a week or so after the Halloween Havoc 1990. He told me to keep an eye out on his new guy, Johnny B. Bad. I was hooked from there. <laughs> 
You were just fun to watch. Thank you for the memories. Teddy Long, I've only met briefly oh. a few times, but I've heard nothing but hilarious things <laughs> we, about him as well. We would have so much fun. No, remember we, he'd hold the hand mitts? Yeah, 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 thing yeah, yeah. We always punch the, the glove off his hand. We had the kiss that don't miss. We had so much fun, you know. We danced in the ring together, and uh, we were both really disappointed when they first split us up. Yeah. Because we had something really cool going, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we didn't really understand it. That we were kind of political, but they, they, we didn't want to get split up. But I think that most people, you know, and again, I, I, I remembered the kiss that don't miss. I didn't remember the name, but I did remember it. I think most people remember Johnny B. Bad as the baby face. Yeah. I don't think most people think of Johnny B. Bad as the bad guy. I think they remember him as the guy that rescued uh, the Diamond Doll yeah. from Diamond Doll's yeah. page and set her free and, and all of those things. And, of course, you know, the television title runs. So, yeah, it, it would have been interesting to see uh, where that would have went if you had stayed heel. But everything happens for a reason, I guess. Yeah, you know, but even... As a baby face, we, it could still work with Teddy because people were cheering us yeah. even when we were a heel. You yeah. Know? So, uh, who knows? Yeah, you never know. Mike Gwynn in Warren, Michigan. Red to Mike Gwynn. Hi, Mike. I hope you're doing good, my friend. John Gregorio says, this is John Gregorio. Hi, John. <laughs> and Mark may remember me from Chicago, but he really helped me through a lot with prayers. This man is a special person. Thank you. Oh, man, thank you so much. And uh, Chicago, I love wrestling at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Do you remember that? <laughs> uh, wild wrestling city. Oh, my gosh. I was actually re-watching WrestleMania 13 the other night, uh, not that long ago. And I remember seeing the Bret Hart Stone Cold Steve Austin I Quit match. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they went out into yes. the crowd, and the fans are so rabid. Yes. And there's this guy in a brown leather coat, and he's rubbing Bret Hitman Hart's hair as they're climbing up the stairs, and he's patting Stone Cold on the back, and Waller just goes, Hit the drunk! <laughs> I was just like, wow. Like, these <laughs> crowds, I could never imagine nowadays in any other city wrestling fans, like, doing that to, to one of the talents right. walking through. Right. But back then, they just were, yes. especially in it Chicago. It was really interactive, man. Yeah. Michael Towers wants to know, was PN News really nothing but a big old ugly bad? Oh, it's a big old ugly bad. <laughs> PN News. <laughs> you stinking bad. Uh, no. I used to tease, you know, I mean, obviously we're yes, playing yeah, on that. Yeah. And uh, he was a great guy, though. Yeah. You know, I, I, PN News was a really good person. That's yeah. awesome. My first feud. That was, Man, yes. My first feud, Johnny B. Bad and PN News. That's bringing back some memories. In fact, uh, one of the matches was uh, with the... Um, Oh, when he brought out the uh, the rap group. Uh, oh gosh. Ian might need your help on this one. Who? No, 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 no. PN News. What rap group did he come out with in WCW? Oh, uh, this the. I think they were sisters. Sisters. No. Salt and Pepper, yes. He, Salt, Salt and yes. Pepper was Salt in and Pepper. News? I didn't know yes. that. Yes. Salt and Pepper was WWF, wasn't it? They did WrestleMania. They, they sang the, Lawrence Taylor the ring. Yeah, no, but, but they were with uh, WCW. They he, he had Salt and Pepper come out with him one time. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was big big time. Maybe it was in Vogue. No, it was Salt and Pepper. I'm taking your word for it. No, that all right, that makes sense. Yeah, but that was very early on, because you got to remember, I was only seven years old at the time, so I'm a baby. <laughs> I might actually be the youngest person in the room right now. Actually, no, Michael, I think, is a little younger than me. Damn it. Anyway, Vincente Garcia in Lancaster, California. Vincente, I love that name, man. Oh, J.R. Sanchez even just said salt and pepper, so we're starting to get some confirmation in the chat. I had no idea that they were in WCW. Uh, I just remember them at WrestleMania 11, bringing Lawrence Taylor the ring. It was salt and pepper. Wow, I'm gonna have to look that up later on. Clash of Champions. That was probably like when they just signed their record deal, though, right? They were probably brand new. They had a hot song back then. Okay, because yeah, when WWE had them, they were pretty huge at that point. J.R. Sanchez, it was at Clash of Champions in Knoxville. This is what I love about the what? 80s wrestling con fans. They're on top of stuff. He said it was at the Clash of the Champions in Knoxville. Yes, so, yes. Thank God for the memories of these fans. Kent Graham in Tennessee to Kent, mm -hmm. IC champ. All right, Kent. Hey, Dennis Grinnell just jumped in, our buddy. Dennis, good to see you, pal.
Cliff Smalling wants to know, Mark, do you watch the current WWE product? I, I don't, and uh, not, not nothing bad or anything. Yeah. It's just that I've been so crazy busy. I just moved to Atlanta, so mm -hmm. I have a new home out there, and I've been doing a lot of projects on that, and I just have not been watching any TV. Yeah. Uh, like, the, I, I, once in a while, I catch up on, on some Netflix stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because you get addicted to watching oh, these, these series that they have, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, there's so many of them, and then, you know, the docu-series, and then... Yes. You know, did, did, I started it, watching one of the UFO stuff. I don't know if you've seen that. That just one. came out. That's on my list. It's on my ever-growing list. Because now, you know, and, and my sister and her husband, we, we split. So I'm like, okay, I'll pay for the Netflix. You pay for the Disney Plus and the HBO Max. But you just wind up getting hooked on so many different things yeah. that it actually, there are nights, especially during the pandemic, now that everything's opened back up and back to work on a more, you know, normal schedule. But there were nights during the pandemic where I would spend two hours trying to decide what I would want to watch. Right, right. And then fall asleep 10 minutes into it. So too much content is out there. So. I'm glad for the break for now, but another cold Jersey winter's coming. So, Nick Pomeroy in Mesa, Arizona to Nick Wild. Hello, Nick. Mark Merrow. What color does he want? Red. Uh, red. Red. And while you're doing that, before I get to this question, I have to bring this up because it seems like every week, doesn't matter who the talent is, what era they were from, we get the same two questions. If you have any memories about ribs from Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning that you witnessed, or memories of ribs from the late, great Owen Hart. And this person, Adam Barney, wants to know, what is your memory working with Mr. Perfect? So I'm sure well, there's some practical jokes played along the way, or? Um, not so much with Mr. Perfect, Owen Hart, practical jokes, but Mr. Perfect wrestling him was one of the best. Okay. I, I'm talking, when I think about the guys that were like, when you, you know, when you get to the arena, they have this blackboard of who you're wrestling that day. You don't always know who you're going to wrestle or work yeah. with that day, unless you're in a program with a person. And I remember getting there and seeing my, uh, the person's name up there, whether it's someone like Kurt Henning or Ric Flair or Stone Cold or Triple H, guys that were like a night off. Okay. Like you knew you were going to have this knockdown, drag out match, but you weren't going to get hurt because it's a dance. Yeah. And, and having a good dance partner means that you can do the most amazing things and nobody's going to get hurt. And I love when, you know, friends of mine that aren't wrestling fans watch these signings because a night off is something that is said over and over by so many yeah. talents, right? And then friends of mine that are only casual wrestling fans will go, but wait a minute, those guys really had great matches. And I go, yeah, that's the point. That's, yeah. It's not about, like, I think when they think a night off, they think, like, you're going to stand there and just play to the crowd for 15 no, minutes. No, no they're, they're going to perform at a high level, but there's no risk. Not that there's no risk. There's always a yeah. risk. But there's, no, there's not that extra fear of getting hurt or someone's going to go into business for themselves because you just know that you're dealing with the utmost professionals. And, and Kurt was such a great storyteller, mm -hmm. you know, and he would take... He'd take amazing bumps. Oh, incredible. I mean, you would just basically touch him, and he could fly across a yeah. rope, flip over, do something that made you look like you were Superman. And the way his know? hair would frizz out, yeah. like, like he, he was just he yeah. was he was amazing. Now, now Owen, <laughs> Owen is a different story. Okay, Owen Hart. I'm wrestling the British Bulldog. Okay. At, a, at an arena, and uh, we're in the locker room going over our match, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we hear the door padlock. Wow. I think it's just someone closed it, but the door where <laughs> we couldn't open the door. And Bulldog automatically knew it was Owen. <laughs> he starts swearing, Owen, and, you know, with his, the, his accent. Yeah. It's just hilarious. Yeah. And I got really Boopy. chuckled Boopy. up thinking, he's going to open up. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's taken, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, and I hear my music playing. Oh, no. Now I know I got to get out to the ring. And I start, now I'm panicking, going, Owen, please, you got to open this door. And uh, so, my music goes right through the whole song. Oh, wow. And now we're really freaking out because now they're coming looking for us. Where's, where's Johnny Be Bad, you know? And uh, next thing you know, they come and they, well, they had bolt cutters or whatever. And Owen acts like he didn't know nothing. That's what? Great. It was locked. I didn't know nothing. I swear, I didn't do it. Uh -huh. And later on, of course, he admitted he did. But Bulldog was so many wanted to kill Owen. Yeah. And we went out there and had a great match. And he was another guy that was great to work well, with. Well, Bulldog and him, obviously, because he was a prankster, too, and they yes. were family. But it seems like nobody stayed mad at Owen no, for these ribs. It no, was just... no, no. It was, it was hilarious once we, we finally you know, had great. our match and went really well. And But it wasn't a TV tape. I mean, obviously, with TV, TV tape, we would have been big trouble. Yeah. But it was just a regular house show. This is something that I don't think I've asked anybody else when we talk about Owen Hart. But maybe you could shed some light, or maybe you don't know. 
Did the office ever get upset with him for the pranks? Did was there ever an agent that would be like, oh, and you know, you can't be doing this crap at the house shows that you saw? Not that I ever saw, but yeah. I mean, there were so many times where someone's uh, um, bag was padlocked to a locker, yeah. or you know, there was just little things that happened that you know we would know Owen, but he, <laughs> he never admitted to a lot of this oh, stuff. Okay. He got away with a lot of stuff, I and mean, people would know it had to be Owen, but yeah. he would never admit to it. You know, Mike Rotunda told us a great story that they were at the Vatican of all places, and he pulled Owen pulled Rene Goulet's wallet out of his pants and then went up to him and said that guy over there just stole your wallet and he had Rene Goulet ready to fight a guy at the Vatican for stealing his wallet and then finally Condé was like no no I have it like then he finally admitted to it and when you just hear stories like that you say to yourself wow what a loss because to yeah. be able to have someone like that with you on the road when you're 280 days out of the year it just it brings a lot and, of levity to it. and he was a great guy a yeah. great family man yeah. uh, just a good person and, and a lot of fun to be around yeah such a tragedy but we love hearing the memories so thank you for sharing that Dylan Misella in New Jersey to Dylan Misella in red in red Mitch Beck, I am so fortunate and blessed beyond measure to count Mark Merrow as a friend. You would be doing yourself a favor by getting one of these autographs. You will treasure it beyond anything else because Mark is truly one of the most special people in the world. Have fun, Mark. Wow. Who, who's that? Mitch Beck. Oh, Mitch. Mitch, Beck. Mitch, is, Mitch is a great guy. I met Mitch in, uh, in, in uh, New Jersey, and uh, he came out to uh, one of my events, and we became friends, and we started having lunch together. <laughs> he's, just a, he's another guy that's a, a Funny guy, yeah. great, great sense of humor, and uh, thanks, Mitch. Uh, I look forward to catching up with you, man. That's awesome. 80sWrestlingCon.com. If you want to take Mitch's advice and order one of those eight by tens, it will be signed by Mr. Marrow. Held up, you'll get your shout out. We are got a lot coming in here, Dylan. Thank you, my friend. They are. They're coming in. Next up, we got Terrence Skog in Norway, Michigan. To Terry, WWF IC champion. All right, Terry. Don't forget 80swrestlingcon.com for all the upcoming signings. You can watch videos of all of our past signings that we've been doing. You can also check out the lineup for Virtual Mania 2 this Sunday. What a lineup it is. We got Billy Gunn. D'Lo Brown, The Headbangers, Mosh and Thrasher, and of course, WWE Hall of Famer, current AEW talent, Mark Henry. So it's going to be a very big day. You can watch SummerSlam on Saturday night. Hang with us for Virtual Mania 2 on Sunday morning. Next up, we got Matt Stevens in South Carolina, red to Matt. Shannon Rivera, that's a great Owen Hart story. Yeah, they, they're all great Owen Hart stories. Ooh, look at this, breaking news. And it's so funny that you're breaking this now because I was actually, I saw a post from this guy today and I was like, we, he'd be great for a virtual signing. So on Monday, November 22nd, Hacksaw Jim Duggan is coming to Monday Night Virtual. So you can come here, 80sWrestlingCon.com, get those orders in. And I'll actually be back for my trip to Florida. So that actually worked out perfect. Marshall Hodge in Tennessee, red to Marshall. Looking forward yeah, to having Max Marshall in November. <laughs> what I miss? What it's I miss? A good thing, tough guy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, when am I going? The 12th through. Uh... Oh, you missed Team Blues November 8th. You won't, you won't oh, all right, so I got two back to backs. There you, you go. There, there you go. So looking forward to having Hacksaw in November. All right. <laughs> Next up, we got Steve Wilde. <laughs> I'm laughing, and I shouldn't laugh at this, but it is kind of funny. Jim Taylor goes, who was the, who was the worst to wrestle, and why was it Vader? <laughs> now, that's me. God rest his soul. But we do hear a lot of stories about how guys hated working with Vader because he yeah. would just literally beat the crap out of them. Do you have any memories of working with Vader? You know what? I, I got to... Um... In WWE, I got to pin Vader with, uh -huh. the, with the wild thing off the top yeah, rope, yeah. and he was real gracious to work with, yeah. and it didn't hurt me. And uh, but he was just a big, strong guy, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's not ballet, is what they no, say. Right? No. So next up, we got Steve Wild in the UK. UK, Red yeah, Steve. right, Steve. You know, I feel because I, I don't like making fun of any talent, especially if if they're no longer with us. And I mean, I'm a Vader fan, but sometimes you just see something in the chat and you laugh and you go, "I have to acknowledge this." Like, you know what I mean? There's, you know, I if something makes me laugh, I have to acknowledge it. Right. Go 
Idol and Laughlin just comes in. How does this work? <laughs> well, it works by you go to 80sWrestlingCon.com, you place your order from Mark Merrow. You can order any of these pictures. They're all listed on the website. I hand it over to him. You tell us what color you want, what you want on it. He signs it, gives you a shout out, and we talk about some memories about how Vader wasn't that mean of a guy. He was fun to work with. Things like that. So place an order, ask a question, and we're here every couple of weeks. We're going to be here this Sunday for Virtual Mania 2, so come back and see us. Next up, we have Keenan Gabby in Canada. To yeah, Keenan, right. Wildman, Mark Merrow. So, Eidolon, that's how it works. Terry Skog says, thanks, Mark, for the autographed pick. Anthony D. Simone, our buddy, just jumped back in. Why don't you stay with us, Anthony? Why do you keep going in and out? Hang out with us. 80swrestlingcon.com. Right, Keenan. <laughs> Dylan Masella, thanks, guys. Can I pick up my picture at the Wrestling Collector Store? Is Tommy paying this guy to keep plugging the Wrestling Collector <laughs> Store? Because <laughs> if he wants to pay me extra, I'll plug it every 10 seconds. Next up, Adam Barney in Burke, New York. To Adam, I'm a bad man. We're just kidding around here. If you haven't been to the Wrestling Collector in Stockholm, New Jersey, it is a pro wrestling destination. They have everything from old VHS tapes to magazines to action figures to T-shirts. And, of course... In-person live signings, there's many coming up, so following the Wrestling Collector on Instagram is a smart move. 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in from Mark Marrow. I feel like one of those guys on QVC in the 90s. Just got to keep it moving. Let's go. All right, next up, Aaron Karpinka in Canada. This has to be flattering, too. A lot of people are ordering multiple shots. They want Johnny B. Bad and the Wild oh, so Man, so that's pretty cool. Aaron Karpinka in Canada, two red, WWF right, Aaron. IC champion. Idolin Laughlin says, thanks. FYI, you're the only one who's pronounced my name right. Well, thank you. That makes me feel better because I feel like I've butchered about 15. <laughs> so thank you, Idolin. I appreciate it. Aaron, it's on its way. All right. Next up, we have Emil Menard, our auction champion. You'll get to know a little bit about Emil later on. He buys everything in these live auctions. He outbids everybody. So he's our number one fan here at 80s Wrestling. We got Con. some stuff to auction a little later, don't we? Yes, we do. So uh, it's going to be a good time. All right, Emil. My other favorite thing about some of these fans is, is that they want to hear specific stories, so they set it up with their questions. So Ryan Martinez says, do you have a story about your first match ever against Doom when you got back to the locker room? <laughs> so imagining there's a good uh, story. I think he already this. knows the story. <laughs> oh, man, yes. I was wrestling on my, one of my first matches with WCW as an enhancement guy. Uh -huh. Was uh, They chose me. I remember I drove nine hours to get there. And with, with some other wrestlers, and they chose me to wrestle a tag team match against Doom. And their finish was when they put you up on their shoulders, they clothesline you, mm -hmm. you kind of flip off, they pin you one, two, three. Now, me being brand new, never did, doing it before, thinking this is a TV taping, I better get out of the ring after they pin me so they have to, oh. they could, and didn't realize that I roll out of the ring. And, and it was customary for the superstars to come into the enhancement guy's locker room and say, hey, thanks for the yeah. match, good, good, good job, or whatever, right? And Ron Simmons comes in and thanks us, and Butch Reed comes in just furious. And he was just livid at me for rolling, go, out, rolling out, of out of the ring so yeah. quick, where it made it look weak. Made it, we're looking back now, I understand yeah. what they meant. And so I was like profusely apologizing. I go, I'm so sorry, I didn't even realize but he kept going off on me, you know? And, you know, you, you can push me so far, and then it's like, then there's a switch that happens where it's like, he's, he's saying, F you, F you, and then all of a sudden the switch hits, and I go, no, F you. Yeah, yeah. And we square off, and we're about to go at it, and Sid Vicious steps between us, and he says, um, hey, Butch, he goes, this guy's cool, man, please, let, let, don't fight now, blah, 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 whatever. And Sid allowed me, told them, I want to work with him next week, meaning me. Wow. And uh, we became friends. And uh, Of all the people you could mention to be a voice of reason in a situation <laughs> like that, i got to be honest with you, Psycho Sid would not have been at the top of my list. Yeah, he would just happen to be in there, in there thanking someone for a match he had with somebody. But yeah. if he wasn't there, um, they probably wouldn't have. 
I thought you told me he was going to come out with scissors and be like, all right, break it up. But no, I mean, no, but no, that is that is great to hear. Uh, but, you know, but I, good for you, too. And again, and I say this all the time, even during my time on the Indies managing, ring announcing, and I say it to comics uh, coming up nowadays, too, because, you know, very early on I was opening for Andrew Dice Clay and Gilbert Gottfried. And most of the time, you know, you have pleasurable experiences. Yeah, you're the young buck, you pay your dues, I understand that, but you're still a man, you're still yeah. a human being that deserves respect. There comes a point where it's like, all right, enough is enough. So kudos to you, and you probably earn more respect from everybody by doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you hear these stories, and you know, I'm not going to mention names because all these guys can kick my butt, but you know, you hear these stories about so-and-so, you know, veteran walking up to somebody and slapping them in the face, and I go, and what, he just sat there? You know what I mean? So... Good for you for standing up for yourself, and I think that's also another reason why you probably did climb up as fast as you did. You know, you got to pay your dues, but at the same token, you have to stand up for yourself. Dennis Grinnell, we just said hi to you in the chat. He's another friend of ours here. To You're Dennis, right, Dennis and Gold WWF and IC gold, gold, champion. Okay. Terry Skog says, "Love the virtual signings. Get to see the wrestlers I grew up on and hear some good stories while at work." Well, thank you, Terry. You make it possible for us to keep doing these. If you want, share the link, share it with your friends, any fellow wrestling fans. Johnny B. Bad, Mark Merrow. That's one of those guys in the business. Two different gimmicks that even not the biggest diehard wrestling fans they know who he is because, I mean, how can you see a guy in outfits like this and not remember him? <laughs> All right, Dennis. I like that gold on there. It looks good. Yeah, and we're staying with the gold, but before we get to that, Brian Gowron wants to know any good flair stories. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Probably I got ones a you can Great flair story. No, there's uh. um I wrestled Rick in the European Cup in Germany. Okay. And um when I was a kid, I watched Rick on TV, and I remember watching him, and you know how he would put his hands out like this, and then when you go to grab him, you go, woo! Yeah, you yeah. Know? Now, here I am wrestling Rick as Johnny B. Bad against Ric Flair for the European Cup. And he puts his hands out, and I go to grab him, and he goes, woo! Oh, wow. And I get deja vu. I see myself in the ring. I see myself yeah. as a kid watching him on television while I'm in the ring with Ric Flair. It was the craziest moment. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was like, I was a kid watching Ric Flair doing the same thing he just did to me as a guy wrestling Ric Flair. That's incredible. It was incredible. So, but, um, great guy. Did it make you fun? Did it make you freeze in the moment or were you able to snap out of it? I, 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 I chuckled to myself. I mean, yeah. I, I just like, like, wow, what a great, like, like I've arrived. I've made it. Yeah. I'm wrestling Ric Flair. You know what I mean? I can it tell was, you still enjoy talking oh, yeah, about yeah, it. That's it was, uh, it, it really was a, a, a moment I'll, I'll never forget. Did you, you share know? that with him? Uh, um, yes, I did. Yeah. And, and not only that, but he, uh, he, like, he beat me in the match, yeah. you know? But, he, you know, he, he beat me by the figure four. But um, during that whole time, he gave me so much. Yeah. He gave me 90% of that match. Yeah. And even during the figure four, he had me reverse it on him. Yeah. Like, roll over, and now I got him in the figure four. And he's not tapping, though, of course, yeah. you know, and he eventually got out of it. But eventually the finish was he finally put me in the figure four, and I obviously had to tap out of it. I love, I love hearing that, and I love hearing guys talk about how much he gives because I grew up a huge fan of the Rockers, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, yeah. I, Shawn Michaels is my goat, you know. So I remember the match being a young kid where he was still a member of the Rockers, but it was right before he turned. He wrestled Ric Flair in an episode of Primetime Wrestling. And I rewatched that match probably about once a year. And you see Ric Flair selling so much. And then you look back on it and you go, yeah, this was a guy who was just a part of the Rockers. He wasn't Shawn Michaels yet. He wasn't even the Heartbreak Kid. And Flair's taking the back body drop. Yeah. He's doing everything. And Lord Alfred Hayes on commentary is like, this Shawn Michaels is a future star. And you're like, wow, now I get it. Like watching it as a kid, you're just like, what's going on here? But now I can understand what that's all about. So to hear you say that, you go from having deja vu to then he gives you such an amazing match. That has to be... Such he, a thrill. He's a veteran that gave so much back to the industry yeah. by building up guys that were, were, you know, starting or starting to get their push, but by Ric Flair doing what he did. And guys like, uh, like, um, um, oh, let me think of, so, so, there's so Sting. many other ones. Uh, Sting, but um, 
Mr. Perfect, oh, another yeah. guy that would just yeah. make you look like a million bucks. You know? Oh, I th I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about guys that flare built up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Perfect too. Yeah, another the one. Guy, guys that built guys that that, that yeah. just made future stars. You know, uh, like uh, um, Bret Hart did for oh, Stone Cold. Yeah, you know, I mean that match right there took Stone Cold to another level. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and like and like Stone Cold did for The Rock in many yes, ways too. So yes. it's it always goes back and forth, and you can always tell. You know, it usually goes the better the worker, the nicer the guy. That's usually what you've yeah. heard over the years, and it seems to ring true. So next up, we got John Jacobs in Lewisburg, Tennessee, to my friend Chief. Chief. A.K.A. Johnny B. Bad. Right. Jeff Major, we uh, covered this a little bit earlier, but it's, you know, worth repeating. Mark Merrow, sir. How have you managed to age so gracefully and still maintain the build? Jeffrey from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. You were talking about eating properly and DDP yeah. yoga and working out. Well, you know, I, I train three times a week. I do I do strength training still. And, uh, of course, DDP and I, I go to I actually go to his, his home and we do it together at his home. And um, I, it, it's about staying active, man. you got to have a reason to get up in the morning every day, you know. And, and now finding myself in this, this health place in my life where I'm eating organic and... and really watching what I'm putting in my body is just manifested into me feeling better, looking yeah. better, and uh, being healthier and helping a lot of people. No, it's it's definitely, uh, again, you got to do the work and make it work, and it's, it's work if you're not used to it, but then it becomes second nature. You want to with Johnny B. Bad on this one? Yes. Okay. Johnny, yeah, it says, to my friend Chief, a.k.a. Johnny B. Bad. Does that mean he wants Mark Merrow as yeah. well? Oh, so he wants Mark yeah. Merrow, a.k.a. Johnny B. Bat. Oh, okay. Just wanted to clarify. Dennis Grinnell says, Thank you, Mark. Much appreciated. Continue being the positive influence this world needs. And Lord knows we need as many of those as we can. There you go. Chief, it's on his way, bud. This was a question that was thrown out there, and I, I'm not sure if you ever did meet him, but any stories with Andre? Did you ever cross paths with him? Oh, John? yes, I did. Oh, okay. Um, when I first I met Andre, as, as early Johnny B. Bad, I mean, real early, yeah. with full makeup and everything, and, and Andre was on crutches, and he came to this center was stage. This WCW period? Yeah, okay. he was on the two crutches on his, uh, on his arms, with the, uh, those, those crutches that go on your mm -hmm. wrists, and he, was, he walked in, and uh, he watched my match, and he wanted to meet me after. Wow. And he, and he goes, and I'll never forget, as I'm walking over to meet Andre the Giant, he goes, I love Johnny B. Bad. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. And he was laughing at awesome. the way I wrestled. That's um, awesome. You know, the character. And yeah, the yeah. And don't miss and all that. And he just got a big kick out of That's it. That's great. Yeah. Did you know, even without the guaranteed contract before, the did you always know, like, I'm meant for WWE because you were doing that flam? You know, I always knew um, that I had to go there because I had to, I felt like I would never have had the career I wanted if I didn't go to the dance, and the dance being WrestleMania. Yeah. And so going to WrestleMania was that, in, in my eyes, I made it. Yeah. You know, I wrestled in WrestleMania. But, um... You know, and people look at my career and stuff, and they can say, you know, you, you shouldn't have done this or you should have done that, or wish you do, would you have any regrets? And I, I have no regrets. I mean, good or bad, like I said, all the paths I took led to me to where I am today. And maybe if that didn't happen or it didn't go this way or that way, this wouldn't have happened. You know, yeah. so you don't you don't really know. But I, I have no regrets. That's awesome. Yeah, so great to hear. Next up for Sissy Hall in South Carolina, gold to Sissy. Sissy. Cliff Smalling's bringing up the retirement match uh, with Dwayne Gill, <laughs> later known as Gilbert. Too. And uh, he actually brought his Pee Wee football team that he coached he down did. to the ring, which yes. I thought was uh, a nice moment, but it kind of made me realize instantly, oh boy, Mark Merrow's done. Yes. Because I'm like, they're not bringing the kids out if Dwayne Gill's about to right. you know, yeah. win, uh, lose this match, rather. So what, what was that? Did you know you were done with wrestling, or you just thought you needed some time off? Because they're asking about it as a retirement match. Did you go in it with that mindset? It was a real strange thing, because um, my ex-wife Sable was mm -hmm. now into a lawsuit. Uh, there was a lot of problems that we were having, yeah. and um, 
I did have another match where people, you know, went over to the to uh, UK and wrestled their pay per view with Capital Carnage. Oh, so these matches were right after the lawsuit was filed. You were still there. We were still there. It was oh, really hard. That had know? to be super awkward. Yeah, really awkward. And I had three years left on my guaranteed contract. You know, and man, back then I'm making about four hundred grand a year, which is huge money back then. Mm -hmm. You know. So here I am with three years left on my guaranteed contract. They had me do this retirement match, and I'm thinking that's just really strange. Then I go to Capital. Then I go to UK, but I'm still wrestling, you know. And then we flew home. That's when we decided that we were done. Yeah. And uh, we weren't going to be coming back. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, because I didn't know if that was like an injury thing or. You no. Know. No. Next up, we got Ryan Perry in Tennessee. Just signature, and nobody can beat the marvelous one. That's in blue. Oh, that's in blue. Yes. Okay. okay. Just signature. Nobody can. Be, you want to write? Nobody can beat the marvelous one. Uh, I believe yes. so. Okay. I don't know how blue's going to show up on this. I'm black. Hmm. hmm. Well, that. we'll give it a shot. Sure. Okay. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. Check out all the great upcoming signings. Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday all day long. We're going to be here at 9 a.m. Kicking things off with Billy Gunn. We're going to have D'Lo Brown, the Headbangers, Mosh and Thrasher, and WWE Hall of Famer, AEW talent, Mark Henry. So it's going to be a very long but very fun day on Sunday. And our 80s Wrestling Con catering manager, is going to be bringing us bagels, pizza, and I'm hearing a rumor about right. tacos. I don't know. I think maybe Jersey Mike's maybe. Jersey Mike's. Oh, look at that. There you go. And then wasn't there also an appearance that you made in WCW in 2000? I yes. remember with Tank Abbott. Yes. And was that supposed to leave? Because now then at that time, WCW, who the hell knew what was going on? Was that yeah. supposed to be a one-off deal or were there plans? We were talking about coming in and signing the contract and uh, it just never materialized. And, and, and I, at that point, I didn't really care because I, I was nursing injuries. Mm -hmm. um, shoulder, you know, I've had uh, five shoulder surgeries, five elbow surgeries, reattached my bicep, um, you know, total reconstruction of my knee. So I had so many injuries, and it was just like, I was really beat up. Yeah, and if you were going to be Johnny B. Bad again, yeah, kind and, of synonymous with the high fly, and it would have been a very different Johnny B. Yeah, Bad. so I didn't really, I didn't push it so hard or care so much. I think they felt the same way, so we never, it never materialized. But and, and they really wanted to get Sable, too. Okay. So it was not, you know. Yes, because they had her ringside, yes, I remember, for, yes. and there was all that controversy. and. Yes, because remember, we're still legally under contract with yeah. WWE, so it was a uh, weird, it was weird, weird situation, a lot of legalities and stuff. Well, what I love hearing about from the Monday Night Wars during that era when we talked to the various talents is nobody knew, as far as talent was concerned, what the hell was going on. So there were guys back in that locker room at WCW that saw Sable come out and they didn't call her Sable. Or I believe they may have called her Rita Mero on camera. But like these guys that worked for WCW were like, oh my God, we're bringing in Sable. She's on the show. Like yeah. nobody was alerted to anything. Right. Like it's just amazing how you literally knew what you were doing and that might change five minutes before you go back out to the ring. So what a wild time to be involved in the business, but a great time to be a fan. Amanda Bowers in Annapolis, Maryland. Blue Amanda. to Amanda Bowers. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. And I'm putting it out there right now. I didn't talk to the man about it specifically, but I think Johnny B. Bad would make a hell of a manager. I really do. No. I, think, I think Johnny B. Bad is perfect for managing, and AEW bad, would be the place. Bad manager. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Johnny B. Bad, maybe managing Sonny Kiss. You never know what could happen. Anything is possible. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. All right. One of your best matches ever, says Ryan Martinez, was against Brian Pillman. Any good stories Brian, working with Brian, him? Yes, man. You know, I'll never forget that match because it was a 30-minute match. And uh, it was, um, I, I believe it was Fall, was it fall Brawl? Fall Brawl or War Games? One of them. I think it was Fall Brawl. Fall Brawl, yes. And um, Michael Buffer was the ring announcer, yeah. you know, and uh, it was a, it was a great match. And I'm Brian. I got to give Brian credit. He he really 
put together a really cool match. He, he utilized both of our high flying things that we were doing. Mm -hmm. And one of the moves that Brian did was this flying head scissor, which I also did, but he, he did it even better. And when I spun him, he had these sequins on his, on his pants. And the sequin slipped my eyelid. You oh. can see, I still got the scar here. Yeah. And, um, and so right off the bat, I was bleeding pretty heavily from this cut. And I remember it kept getting in my eyes. And so, but it didn't hinder our match at all. But uh, it was uh, right off the bat, I was busted open pretty bad. And it was from uh, his uh, sequence on his, wow. uh, his, his trunks. As a teenager during that time, a young teenager listening to grunge music and stuff, I loved Brian Pillman. I mean, it was the whole loose cat and gimmick. He was yeah. the first guy to kind of blur the lines, which has been discussed so many times and so many different shows like Dark Side of the Ring and whatnot. But when you were there in WWE during that time, and I know Brian was going through a lot. He had the car right. accident injury. How crazy was it? Were some of the guys really confused, like, is he working us right now, or is this part it of was, a... It was really blurred. It was yeah. really, really well done. You know, the whole gun thing with Stone yeah. Cold, yeah. really well done. Um, his son is a really good friend of mine yeah. today. And uh, his son and, and his son and his daughter both came up to one of my presentations. So we've been friends for years now. And seeing his son now do well, yeah. you know. It's and great. Kind of, yeah, so it's really cool. But yeah, it was a... And what it, was his aunt's name? She deserves a shout out. What was it aunt? Linda? Linda. Linda Pillman. Linda Pillman. Yes, and I believe great. the guys from Dark Side of the Ring even made her her own T-shirt. Talk yes. about an incredible. Woman. Oh, she is she is amazing. And uh, yes, they all came out to my presentation, so I got to meet them all and and get to know them. Yeah. And um, uh, I just couldn't be happier for for that family and how well they're all doing now. Yeah. No, that's it's an awesome. Uh, it's a tragic story, but it does have uh, Linda a happy Pillman ending. became the the mom and. and sense of the, the overseer of everybody and really encourage these kids to do well in life and, and they both are doing so amazing. No, that's great. That's so great to hear. And like I said, I was a huge Brian Pillman fan, but when, you know, again, when you follow wrestling and you read everything that's going on and now it's all out in the mainstream, all the exposed secrets and whatnot, you have to put yourself in the position of the talent and wonder what they're thinking. When you're seeing some of this craziness going on, you're like, are you feeling uncomfortable at the time? Or are you going, okay, it's probably a work, but yeah. it really is a circus <laughs> lifestyle compared to what it is now. It was it was so crazy because you didn't know what Brian was going to say next. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, like, we were know if he was given the, the liberties to do what he wanted, yeah. you yeah. know, because it was going really way off yeah. key, you know, like, when he signed his contract, they showed it. They started bleeping him, and then they, they had like a, a vice president, you know, from Canada going, "We're going to try to look at this contract." And like it was for the first time, like, "Wow, is this real? Is this part yeah. of the storyline?" You just didn't. He know. was he was headed to superstardom. Yeah, he really was. Yeah. I think he would have been one of the top guys. Without a doubt. Uh, you know, just the way he talked and acted, and the following he was gathering. Mm -hmm. then, you know, it, was, it would have. Yeah. Just a tragedy. Definitely, definite tragedy. Tom Twist in New York. Tom. I'm a bad man in blue. In blue. Emil Menard says, Mark is such a very humble guy. He is very positive. My kids are even enjoying this signing. Well, thank you, Emil. And say <laughs> hi awesome. to the kids for us. Yeah, the kids <laughs> hey, here. Hey, kids. He's coming down this weekend. Oh, he's coming for Virtual Mania, too. Good stuff. Just scrolling up, trying to read through these comments. Oh, actually, and we got cut off. We got sidetracked before. You said you had run into Dwayne Gill recently. You said uh, in autograph signing. Oh, okay. Yes, cool. yeah, he's, he's a great he's, guy. He is a great guy. You Such know? a great guy. If I could have been retired by anybody, thank you, Dwayne. <laughs> there you go. Next up, Chris. Is that Gills? G I L R S. Gillers. Chris Gillers in Georgia. To Chris, you're a bad man in blue. All right. Ken Graham goes late to the party here. Have you talked about the Brawl for All? <laughs> yes. yes, we have. 80swrestlingcon.com in the next couple days. But if you have any question uh, that might not be related to what we already discussed, basically we covered that it was a bad idea. Nobody thought it was a good idea. And it didn't make much sense. So if you have any other insight other than that, please feel free to add it in the chat. But I think we pretty much summed it up perfectly. But hey, if you got something for us, hit us with it. When you're a bad man, I wrote to Chris, I'm a bad man, so are you, so that's okay. Um, uh, 
talk to Tommy. I'm going to talk to Tommy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll do it over if, if there's a prop, okay? All right. Fernando Bori in New Jersey. Blue to Fernando. Three-time WCW to Fernando. champ. And we could tell he uh, spent a lot of time as a boxer, Mr. Merrow did, because his hand is not cramped up once. These <laughs> signings are coming in. WrestlingCon.com, get those orders in. I don't think we've seen this photo yet. It's another one for Chris, but oh wow, that's that's another. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough one. This is like a like a Miami Vice uh, Duran Duran video just crashed into each other. This is this is a lot of colors going on here. A lot of colors. Signature, and I'm gonna kick your booty with, with my, my two new fruity. fruity. Well, there you go. There you if go. you're gonna have that inscription, <laughs> that's the picture for it. You know. Uh, is this 2A1? Two, uh, two blue? Well, it's, it's, oh, no, so it's a signature, blue. but it's for Chris, Chris. Gillers again. Chris Gillers. Sorry if I keep butchering your name. If you'd like to spell it phonetically in the chat, please feel free to do that. 80swrestlingcon.com. We're having a great time here with Mark Merrow. So many stories, lots of fun memories. If you want to participate, please feel free to jump in on the chat with any questions or comments. But don't forget, you can go to 80swrestlingcon.com. That's how we pay the bills Place those orders for Mr. Merrow to sign an 8x10 for you. He will hold it up, shout it out. Don't forget to follow at 80s Wrestling on Instagram. You can follow me at Ryan Mar Comedy, Ryan M A H E R Comedy. You're on Instagram as Mark Merrow or the Mark Merrow. I'm trying to remember. Um, Instagram, I'm at Mark Merrow. At Mark Merrow on Instagram. I'm a follower. I should have known that. I see all of his pictures. Guys living the life down there in Georgia. Very jealous. Beautiful weather all year round. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking about Florida myself. I can't handle this Jersey weather anymore. Can't handle it. All right, Chris. I'm going to kick your booty with my two-day fruit day. Next up, we got Justin Frazier in Pennsylvania. Just signature, and I'm so pretty. Just signature. To, to, to Justin. No, just a, just a signature. Oh, just signature. signature. Okay. If you're asking questions about current talent, uh, Mr. Merrow just stated he's not currently watching the product. Now, I, I did meet, you know, um, DDP and I, you know, we do our yoga together, and every once in a while some of the guys from AEW come oh, okay. over and do yoga with us, and uh, we had Darby Allen with us. Oh, okay. And um, so I didn't know, I never watched Darby before, but uh, just getting to know him at the, at, for, through, through Dallas, we became friends, and uh, so he, he started showing me some of his stuff, and I thought, this guy gets tossed around like, you know, yeah. like Ray Mysterio yeah, did, you yeah. know? And uh, they was telling me about a match he was having with Sting. So I, and Sting and I obviously wrestled together. I know Sting is a friend. So I checked him out, and uh, I was just, uh, just uh, became a fan. Yeah. You know, yeah. love his stuff, man. And I'm telling you, I guess, I don't know if it's the pandemic that softened me in some ways or whatever, but I used to kind of be a little bit more of a wrestling purist, right? And I still am in many ways. There's a lot of things that I see that annoy me and drive me crazy. But when I watch Orange Cassidy now with the hands in the pockets, yeah. like sometimes, and I, like, you just laugh. It's funny. It's entertaining. It's what yeah. wrestling's supposed to be in a lot of ways. But, you know, again, if I see it over and over again, I start to get a little annoyed. But, you know, there's a little bit of room for everything. And that's what I like to see. It went from being a business where you're either a fan or you weren't to now there are so many people because they can identify with an Orange Cassidy or yeah. an RB yeah. Allen or whatever. So it's a, it's a great thing for the business in many ways. And like I said, Johnny B. Ma Johnny B. Bad is a manager in AEW. That's money. So mm -hmm. let's see if it happens. Next up, we got Chris DeFano in Wisconsin. Blue to Chris. To you, Chris. Sean Barton wants to know if you have any interesting stories about working with Luna. Oh, my gosh. WrestleMania. I mean, that was the first mixed tag match yeah. ever. Another first that yeah. I was in, you know? Yeah. Uh, with um, uh, Luna and Gold Goldust against uh, Sable and I. Yeah. WrestleMania was an amazing match, and uh, she was intense. Yeah. She, she was. was. Uh, she was so good at playing her character. Yeah. I mean, one of the best. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, another tragic loss. So young, you know? And it's, it's, it's always sad, too, when I see, I think about talents like her, you know, a lot of people talk about Trish Stratus and Lita, and of course them too, but 
when you really go even further back, you think of the Sherry Martells, the Medusas, the Luna Vachans, what they would be like with the crop of female talent that exists now. Yeah. yeah like exactly. that that would be amazing, yeah. you know. Talk you're, about it. You're absolutely of time. right. There there wasn't the talent that there is today back yeah. then for the woman. You know? No, and, yeah. and I mean I just think of those three off the top of my head, before we even go to Trish or Lita yeah. or anybody else, it's like wow, like the matches that you I mean, can you imagine Charlotte Flair and Luna Vachon? I mean, that would be wild. Oh my gosh, yes. Next up, Mike O'Brien in New York, just signature, and I'm a bad man. All right. Is it, is it Mike? No, just your signature. Okay. Okay. Heather Siebel. Matthew from the Mind Train wants to know about how it felt to tape WCW Saturday Night at Disney, but I believe WCW Saturday Night was at center stage. It was worldwide at Disney. Am I correct there? Yeah, I am. Um, I don't know which which show was at. I mean, but we were yeah. at Disney. Yeah, you know? I think the WCW Worldwide tapings they were an attraction at Disney. I, I love taping there. Yeah, I was always so upset because I would go to Florida every year, and MGM Studios, which is now Disney Hollywood Studios, it was MGM at the time. That was my favorite park, but I was never there for a WCW taping, and it was just an attraction at the park yeah. that they let people in for. Which is kind of interesting when you look back and you watch those old clips on YouTube, because you could tell there were a lot of people that weren't wrestling fans that were there because they had like the sign that said "boo," and they would just be like, <laughs> bah! but it wasn't like authentic, and I'm like, eh. but hey, I was still watching every Saturday at 11 a.m. on TBS. <laughs> Bill Desmaris in Rhode Island, blue to Bill. Hello, Bill. You actually take over for a second. I'm going to step out for one second. Okay. Mr. Ian Levy, the 80s Wrestling Con catering manager, is going to take over for a while. Ian, <laughs> you got some big shoes to fill, buddy. If you got any Nikita Koloff stories, <laughs> he loves Nikita. Oh, Nikita's a great guy, man. Yeah, he loves. Yes. We had him here uh, a couple months ago for a virtual. Oh, yeah? yeah awesome, really well. man. Yeah. Here we have uh, to James Dunn from, looks like, Statesville, Hello, North James. Carolina. Just your signature on that. Okay. In blue. James, there you go. And this one is for Robert Love out of Alameda, California, to Robert. Hello, Robert. WWF IC champ, marvelous Mark Miracle. All right. We're going to have to do that better. That was going to be green. Oh, green, okay. Yeah. Okay. We will. Yep, we'll come back to that one. Okay. Hey, Brian. Ryan, can you give me another one of these? Yeah. Please, thanks. All right, this one. In pink? For Robert Love. Oh, so Robert's going to have green and pink. Okay. So to Robert, the kiss that don't miss okay, on that. Okay, to Robert. Here for Kelly uh, Fields out of Pennsylvania, just your signature in red and WWF IC champ. Don't forget this Sunday we have Virtual Mania 2. We're gonna have here Billy Gunn, we got the Headbangers, we got Mark Henry, 
and we're missing D'Lo Brown. So don't forget, get your orders in, 80swrestlingcon.com. All right. And we'll see you guys Sunday for that one. Chris Dufano, and I cannot read the city. Manitoner? Manitowic, maybe? Manitowic? Wisconsin. But he's out of Wisconsin. You'd like it to Chris, WWF IC champion, wild man Mark Miller. Okay. So don't forget, you can also order your mail-in order items for Jesse the Body Ventura for the upcoming live 80s Wrestling Con, May 2022, Morristown, New Jersey, Men in Sports Arena. Later that night, there will be a live ISPW wrestling event. So uh, keep checking the website for that one. There you go. Thank you. And this one is for Jeff Kubasak, I believe, out of New York. Just your signature, and I'm a bad man with WCW there. Oh, well, I think it's the same guy, right? Nope, New Jersey. Very good. What do we got next? Well, we get into the uh, the auction items uh, very right. soon, and we got some. The, uh, the mail-in items that people sent in. We have a few books. Mm -hmm. We got a uh, couple of your WCW 8x10s over there. We got a, uh, a turnbuckle for you to sign as well. Very cool. Nick Cannock out of New Jersey. Read your signature, WWF IC Champion, okay. 1996 on that one, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Marr. Oh wow, you were in a hurry. You didn't even ask if I was ready. I could just be just be walking back. <laughs> I'm sure you're ready. Since when are you camera shy? All right. <laughs> All right. You had Let me uh, go back. Six. Okay. This one leaked a little bit, so I'm gonna let that one dry. Okay. Oh, all right. See that? There you go. Okay. It looks like it was written in yeah. blood. Yeah. All right, so I am going back. I apologize. I had to step out for a second. Nature calls over these live processes. So next up we have Brian Mullis in Temple Terrace, Florida. The kiss that don't miss in black after the signature. All right, so allow me a few moments here to scroll up and see if I missed anything in the chat. Ooh, Kent Graham wants to know if you have any good Rick Rude stories. Yeah, man. I wrestled Rick Rude for the world title. Yeah, the WCW point. International. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And mm -hmm. another guy that we were talking about, guys like Kurt Henning and, and Ric Flair, that would help young talent to step him up. And he made me look like a million I have always man. heard that about him. He's another yes. name that comes up time and time again. Uh, I haven't interviewed Kevin Nash uh, in one of these virtual signings, but I remember him talking in many interviews. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I remember him saying in uh, many interviews that Rick Rude and the car rides, you know, town to town, taught him more about the business than anybody else. And he also mentioned Kurt Henning and all those guys, and of course they were best friends. Yeah, he was an uh, amazing talent to work with, and a good guy, man. Uh, yeah, got along really well with him, too. Next up, Luke Glover in Texas. Just signature, and I'm a bad man. In black. Okay. All right, so here is the full list of all the upcoming signings that we have at 80swrestlingcon.com. You can go to and place your order. Don't forget, there's the Wrestling Collector Superstore. There's going to be in-store appearances. These are strictly the virtual signings that I will be at and uh, hosting alongside the great staff here. We got Mayor Martinez, 80s Wrestling Con Catering Manager Ian Levy, the boss Tommy Fierro, Mike over to the side. So this Sunday, Virtual Mania 2, live all day, we got Billy Gunn, we got D'Lo Brown, we have the Headbangers, Mosh and Thrasher, as well as WWE Hall of Famer Mark Henry. That's Virtual Mania 2, live this Sunday. And then the list goes on. September 13th, Bushwhacker Luke and Brooklyn Brawler along with Oscar for Men on a Mission. September 20th, we have Slick. 
September 27th, the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, the Honky Tonk Man. October 11th, Four Horsemen Night, Barry Windham and J.J. Dillon. October 25th, The Boogeyman and Gangrel. I'm already having nightmares, Mr. Marrow. <laughs> November 8th, Misty Blue. And just announced tonight, November 22nd, Ho! Nope, not talking about The Godfather. We already had him. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, tough guy. November 22nd. So that's just a who's who. Wow, well, that's going to be a great time. You keep hey, in contact with any of those guys? Um, yeah, I see them at these autograph signs. Yeah. It's always great to run those guys. That's great. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. All right, I'll Mark Merrow is going to step out and take a quick break, and I'm going to be joined by Ryan Martinez or Ian Levy, whoever. I don't know. I'm going to be joined by somebody while Mr. Merrow is, well, whatever. I mean, I can't keep the whole show going by myself. You could. I could, but I mean, you know, then I start to then I start yeah. to feel like De Niro in The King of Comedy. You know what I mean? It's just gets to be a it's little a much. Movie. It's a really good movie. It's a great movie. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in for Mark Merrow. We're going to be here with him till about 10 p.m. We have some of the fans uh, memorabilia that's been sent in. We have the encyclopedias. We do, but don't forget, we have a live event coming up. I'm going to let Ian Levy talk a little bit about this. Live ISPW Wrestling. Now, if you haven't seen Sergeant Slaughter Live or Rikishi Live and want to get their autographs, we got a 2 p.m. Meet, meet and greet, Butler, New Jersey, at the high school. Mm -hmm. 4 p.m. start. You got it. We 2 got p.m. Meet and greet. This is an incredible card. Yes, it is. We got some ECW uh, guys on the show. Vicious we, Vicky for the Vicious first Vicky. ever ISPW Women's Championship. Is it the that, first ever, or was there the a champion first. back in the day? First, no, first, first ever. This is the first ever. There were a lot of firsts in ISPW 20 years ago. We're bringing it back. Yeah. Okay. But this isn't like a total redo. It's that no. old school mix with the new school. That is correct. And so for the first time ever, there's going to be an ISPW Women's Champion crowned with Vicious Vicky. And who's she taking on? I think it's Gabby Ortiz, I yeah. believe. Gabby and, hey guys, Ortiz. this is Tommy. I actually don't come in front of the camera. It's not my gimmick. <laughs> but uh, I just want to let everyone know that Ryan is actually going to be the host of 80s Wrestling Con Live. Yes. At the Men in Sports Arena oh, wow. in Morris County, Jersey. Let's give Ryan a nice. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward hand. to that. I'm looking forward to Jesse, that. Jesse, the body mentor, has already been confirmed to appear. And I will. I have a few lined up so far. I'll announce the second one right now for the first time. Jake the Snake Roberts has been confirmed for 80s WrestleCon Live awesome. in Morristown, New Jersey as well. Awesome. And uh, Ryan will be the live host and Jumpin' Jay from 80s Wrestling the Podcast. We're going to do a live 80s WrestleCon Live podcast at the, the con as well. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. That, and you know what? That's going to literally be, I mean, he was just talking earlier, Mr. Mark Merrow, mm -hmm. about having literal deja vu being in the ring with Ric, Ric Flair, Flair in Germany. And I'm not going to lie. It's going to be kind of interesting to have Jesse the Body Ventura, Jake the Snake Roberts, <laughs> all these iconic talents right. live, and you can experience it right there. You think it's just going to be a normal, everyone's going to be hanging out? You're going to put that many colorful personalities in a room? Nostalgia. And, and the, cool, the, the, the cool thing is, since everyone's been sticking with us through the virtual during the pandemic, we're going to allow mail order for the convention for the first time ever. So wow. if you can't make it and you want to get a signed picture of Dusty Ventura or Jake Roberts, whoever else is on the show, you'll be able to do that. We just un, uh, let 100 spots available for Jesse Ventura on the website tonight, and, and tickets are moving fast for that. So if you want to get a signed picture of Jesse the Body, definitely head over to the website. But uh, Ryan will be the host of 80s WrestleCon Live, and he's done a fantastic job, oh, and I you. wouldn't want to have fun. anyone else oh, hosting thank you. my show other than him. I, I appreciate that. That's very, that's very kind of you guys, and, I, and I'm looking forward to it. It's been a lot of fun. And look, he talks about sticking through it during yeah. the pandemic. No, no, you can't just escape oh, that no. easily. He, oh, no, 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 hold on. We're going to keep you oh, here no. for this. <laughs> Doing these throughout the pandemic has been a lot of fun for me as well. And, you know, we were all stuck at home going through stuff. This was something to look forward to. It was something to look oh, yeah. forward to. Like, hey, you know what? Get to go out and hang out and talk about wrestling. How can you Guarantee go a good time. So mark it on your calendar. We're back in business live. Now you can get the hell out of here. All right. All right. <laughs> and now returning... WCW television champion, WWE oh, Intercontinental right. champion, Mr. Mark Merrow, Johnny B. Bad, the wild man, and marvelous. I remember it this time. I'm back. He got very upset off camera before we started because <laughs> I forgot marvelous Mark Merrow. But we'll talk about him 
in just a little bit because, you know, again, that was kind of towards the tail end, but kind of had that badass look going. You kind of were mixing like Mike Tyson there a little bit with the bandana yeah, coming out. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was fun to play that. You know, yeah. and, and, you know, we had so much heat back then, you yeah. know, with, with the, the animosity with Sable and mm -hmm. myself and, you know, and boy, that was a crazy time. Yeah, and, and what a time, a great time to be a wrestling fan, though. And again, we've talked about it with every talent that we've had here week after week. Everybody had a role. Yeah. There was none of this talk like you see now about, oh, this guy is a jobber, this guy can't get to the mid card. Everybody had a role during the Attitude Era, so. It was the best time to be in the business, you know, when yeah. you look, look back and I remember being in the locker room and thinking of who, who, who was in there? There's The Rock, mm -hmm. there's Stone Cold, there's Shawn Michaels, there's The Undertaker, you know, we, we, there's Big Show, there's this, you know, there's like just everyone that I got to work with over the years. And that's why I love that we've here at 80s Wrestling Con collectively, yeah, it's all about 80s wrestling, that's the golden yeah. era, but we've included a lot of the Attitude Era and early WCW stars in that because again, what a wild time to break into the mainstream. And not that it didn't in the 80s, that's when you had MTV and everything else, but I mean, you guys were juggernauts, you were all rock stars back then. Yeah. And not, no TMZ or paparazzi back then, people were a little <laughs> nicer. Reggie Wilhelmson in San Diego, California, silver this silver, time okay. to Reggie. Billy Sirachi, can I ask Mark Merrill a question? Sure, shoot, what do you got, Billy? <laughs> Kent Graham helping you out. Go ahead, Billy, ask away. I feel like I'm on uh, live radio right now. And there's a caller that's like, all right, are you there, Billy? There you go. All right, next up, Robert Elwell in Wichita, Kansas, Silver to Robert, never give up. Yeah. Let's see. Justin Frazier says, met Mark at Celeb Fest in Baltimore in May, and he's just as nice in person as he is every time I see him speak. Oh, great good, guy who doesn't get enough credit for his contributions to the business. Awesome, Justin. Great comments. Awesome. 80swrestlingcon.com. A lot of big announcements made tonight. Go to 80swrestlingcon.com to check out all the great upcoming signings. Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday. There you go. Ryan Evans in Maryland is up next. Silver <coughs> just signature for Ryan Evans. Next up, Bob Fenderlender in New Jersey. Fenderlender? Yeah. I like that. And a few weeks ago, I was in a Fender Bender. No, but uh, <laughs> I, think, I think that always makes me giggle when you look at it really fast. Bob Fenderlender. But how you doing, Bob? And he wants just signature. Every time that, that one says. <laughs> and wild man Mark Merrow right. in blue. blue. Oh, Christopher DeFano with a question that I'm actually surprised hasn't been asked uh, so far. Hi, Mark. I don't know if you have answered this already or not, but when you were Johnny B. Bad, did you ever meet Little Richard or get to hear what he thought of the character? Thanks again for the autograph. And, and I shared that with you earlier. You know, um, Little Richard recently passed away. I believe it was a little over a year ago, probably, right? A year or two years ago? Yeah, give or take. Yeah. Right. I think it was before the pandemic, wasn't um, it? Not? Yeah. He, his driver reached out to me on social media and said that Little Richard loved the character. That's and awesome. really enjoyed it. Because I always wondered, did did he ever see it? I mean, I knew he'd seen it. Yeah. They, they had a picture of him holding one of my posters. And I heard that at one of the concerts, he said he rolled out my poster and he said, they say he's pretty. Then he rips it up and goes, but not as pretty as me. Oh, that's <laughs> so fantastic. What I was told was he really enjoyed the character. Oh, and, and how could you not? Oh, I mean, yeah, so I was really glad to hear that. I'm a big but believer. But I never got to meet him personally. I'm a big believer in imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Absolutely. So I think that's great. Jason Baker in Delaware to Jason in Blue. Reggie Williamson says, awesome, thanks for the autograph. Loved watching your matches. Your moveset was ahead of the times and you made every persona work on your own. Can we get another one of these? I wrote the wrong name on there. Sure. Yeah, I, said right, I said right wild. Oh, man, I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. 
that happens a couple times. We had yes. Godfather last week. He was putting Papa Shango on Godfather. Godfather. Yeah. So <laughs> it happens after a while. Next up, we got Dan Trebone in nearby Lodi, New Jersey. Just Signature and WWF IC Channel. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Billy, that question was already covered. Go to 80swrestlingcon.com in a couple days. Guys, I'm sorry if I just acknowledge you like that. I'm not trying to be rude, but no sense in repeating the questions. So okay. 80swrestlingcon.com in the next couple days, you can watch this entire shoot interview back. Jason, this is the redo, the Jason okay. Taylor for Blue. Sorry about that, Jason. Janelle Anselmo says the confetti cannon was so cool. That was the, the, bad, uh, the blaster. bad blaster, yeah. yes. Do you know, we, we actually, uh, on uh, live TV, we'd actually put 5 and $10 bills in there. So oh. when we shot them out, you know, people in the audience would be holding up, they'd like money. Yeah. So when we'd go to house shows, we'd put fake money in this and, <laughs> and Johnny we trust. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and then years later, I think JBL, they did the fake money thing, too. That was uh, popular for a little bit there. Oh, yeah. WWE. Everything in wrestling is a redo at some point, right? Yep. All right. Next up, we got Ben Teller in Connecticut. Gold, just signature, three-time WCW TV champ. Oof. Remember how you said earlier about the pizza? Yeah. I think it might yep. be, it's getting to me before it's getting to you tonight there, Mr. Mero. <laughs> I'm, I'm in big trouble. It was so delicious, I but I haven't had it in a while, so. Kent Graham. Oh, well, I wanted to know this, too, because I said I believed you were the first person in the United States that I saw do it. Kent Graham goes, I always loved the shooting star press you did. Where did you get the idea of doing it? You had said the diving board as a kid. Um, and but as a kid, but, but seeing it over in Japan. When okay. I wrestled in Japan, I saw someone do it over in Japan, and I thought it was the most incredible thing. Yeah. You know? And uh, uh, and then as a kid, we used to do all these crazy, like we like the marrow salt <coughs> was something I did as a kid yeah. on a diving board, not even thinking I'd be doing this in a wrestling ring someday. Yeah. But I thought, you know, people always look at the shooting star press as being a, an incredible move, but it was the... The Merrill Salt was really the most dangerous move because when you jump, you turn in midair and then land on the ropes mm -hmm. and then do a moonsault. Yeah. The problem with that was that, you know, all us wrestlers would all wear oil on our bodies, you know, so you make sure you look shiny and bigger on TV, you know, mm -hmm. and it brings out your tan. But the problem with that was is that the ropes were all full of oil too and turnbuckles. So when you climb up top, it's very slippery. Yeah. So when you jump and spin in the air and then have to land your feet on those ropes to do another flip was always really challenging. Well, perfect question for you that I just thought of, because we were talking with Dean Malenko a couple weeks ago, and Dean was talking about the difference in size of a WCW ring yes. and a WWE yeah. ring, and how the ropes are different. Yeah. So, you being a high flyer, because mm -hmm. Dean said, he goes, you know, I didn't really use the top rope or anything like that as often. Right. But, you know, he was still very active in the ring. You, using that top rope a lot, and, you know, performing these high-risk maneuvers, how long did it take you to adjust to the different size rings? It was weird because the uh, WWE rings were ropes. Okay. And they gave so much more. Mm -hmm. and, and so you didn't get that spring like those steel cables did at mm -hmm. WCW. I mean, you could just jump and you fly on those things. You yeah. Know? But WWE ropes were much different, much different. And I'd always ask them to tighten them before my matches because I knew I would be doing, I knew my finish was going to be the wild thing off the top rope. Yeah. So I needed them really tight for me. And many times right before my match, they'd go out and, you know, during a commercial break or whatever and tighten those ropes for me. Oh, good. That's good to know. Yeah, because you always hear different, you know, things and you always wonder, is that like fan lore that, you know, there's huge different sizes between the rings, but you guys keep There was, yes. So. Now, do they warn you of that when you sign? Like, does anyone tell you, hey? No. No. no Nobody you, cares. you got to figure out a lot of stuff on your own. I can imagine. Real quick. I can imagine. Andy from Arizona is up next. Johnny B. Bad. Hello, Andy. WCW television champion. Jonathan Jacobs says, please read to Mark. Mark is my Facebook and Instagram buddy. He always takes some time to interact with me. I told him on his birthday if he would have had the spring of the ropes, he'd had a successful double marisol. <laughs> there you go. 
Tell him to get one of those small trampolines and he'll nail it. Also, Mark, real champion outside the ring. The work he does with our youth, God bless him. Much love and respect, Mark John Jacobs. Oh, thank you, Mark. That is awesome. <laughs> Mark, I appreciate the, the thoughts of, of getting the trampoline and all that, but I'm telling you, on Labor Day, I'm going back to Lake Lanier, I'm going to the top of that deck, and I'm going to nail the double marrow salt. Even though I said I was going to do it on my 61st birthday, I was very close, but I'm going to get it on Labor Day. Okay, so check it out. We'll be doing it live on Facebook again. I got to tell you, you can really, you know, and this is not taking anything away from any of the previous talent that we've had because they've all been great with our fans, but just from these comments coming in, it's like a lot of these people are talking to you as if you are just an old friend of theirs. So the connections that you've made through social media with people is really uh, just awesome to see. And we're seeing it right now in the chat because there's so many people commenting that have their own little personal story with you. So this is cool. And when live conventions are back, go see this guy. And hopefully we can have him involved uh, with 80s great. Wrestling Con in the future. Next up, we have Jim Myers, San Francisco, California. Blue Wildman Mark Merrow. Janelle Anselmo asked, did he already talk about his boxing career? Always wondered if he wanted to go pro. Yep, that was probably within the first 10 minutes that was discussed. So please go to 80swrestlingcon.com. In the coming days, you'll be able to see the full. I'm the only guy you know that got knocked out shadow boxing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, Tim Jackson in Maryland. Just Signature and WCW's Bad Man. Okay. WrestlingCon.com. A lot of big announcements were made tonight. Go to the website for all the information about Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday. All right. Is this the stuff that's up next? It is. Right. All right. Sorry, I just I can't. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, are these the auction items? No, no. Are no so these are actually my favorite part of these signings. It's something that's always cool that I love to come here and check out. Uh, people can send in their stuff okay. in advance, yeah. and then we get it sent back to them so they can go to 80swrestlingcon.com to find out how they can send in their personal memorabilia to be signed by the talent at the upcoming signings. And uh, I remember these because these were the Jack Specific WWF action yeah. figures. And this was the manager series, and so this was very early Mark Merrow along with Sable. I think that's actually uh, right from when you <laughs> rescued her from the evil Triple H, right? So there you go, <laughs> old school. Nice. Yeah. I think I was on drugs at that time. <laughs> 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 the action I mean, I think That might have been before 2003 because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was 1995, I believe, right? Does it say on the back here? 1997 it was, okay. So yeah, so you debuted at the end of 1996. Yeah. And so then this was came out in 1997. So this was pretty early on. Wild Man Mark Merrill. I like the haircut that's used on the there, photo there. There you go. That was the Wild Man haircut. Yes. Very impressive. So this is Sean McBride. It's always cool to see these sent in, and he wants blue, just signature. You know, going back, I, I'm looking back on this. You know, um, obviously being married to to Rena at yeah. the time was so cool to have you and your wife show up on, on a, a manager series like this. Yeah, know? that's awesome. That's wild. Um, I can only imagine what it must have been like to be your neighbors. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're like, oh, here comes uh, Mark and Sable again, right? Like, because again, you guys were rock stars at the time. Billy Sirachi, we already talked about Owen Hart ribs. He told a great story about Owen Hart. Uh, so I want you to go to 80swrestlingcon.com and check that out in the coming days. Okay, is this a rib, this name? <laughs> John Golombuski. I got it. John Golombuski. Silver Just Signature. Okay. So I guess we could do that right there. That is so cool. That's when I won the Intercontinental Belt. Yeah, uh, against Farouk. Yeah. Right? Who is a great guy. Yeah, we had him. Uh, that was oh. one of the first signings I hosted very early on. One, one of my favorites. If you, when next time you get him, and I want, I want, I want him to tell you the story. Okay. You remind him to tell you the lawnmower story. Okay, that's all I okay. want to say. Okay. All right. <laughs> Tommy me. Fierro, take note. The next time we have Ron Simmons, we have all to right. ask him the lawnmower, lawnmower story. Lawnmower story. Okay. All right. 
And this is another WWF trading card. Wild Man Mark Merrow. This was like a cartoonish line they put out, I guess. So this is like a cartoon version of Wild Man Mark Merrow. This is for Sean Barton. In black. Black to SB1. Okay. Here we are once again with the Bad Blaster that Janelle Anselmo just talked about a little bit. Justin Frazier in Pennsylvania to Justin. I'm a bad man. And now, uh, look at that, look at that tuxedo. Ooh, That's sharp. Yeah. That is sharp. This is a World Championship Wrestling promo photo. And this was sent in by Chad Matthews. And he would like, please sign with a blue Sharpie. I'm a bad man, Johnny B. Bad. Okay. Now these are the parts where I'm a little more quiet. We hold off on the questions because there's no redos on these, so bear with us. Okay. All right, Chad Matthews once again, and this is a color WCW promo photo. That was my first one. Oh, okay. That was the first one I ever did. Yep. Wow. Right there. I, I would say 1991 on it, right? Yeah, 1991 World Championship Wrestling. Yeah, that was the first one. Wow. See, and that's why I always enjoy this too, because I was a slob as a kid. I didn't ever hold on to anything this nice. So when I see these people send this in, that's really cool to see. So Black Johnny B. Bad for Chad Matthews. Emil Menard says, any hints on auctions? Well, you know what, Emil? Now you gotta wait. Now, <laughs> we're gonna be coming up with the auction in just a little bit. I love how Emil says any hints, as if he doesn't, you know, already have the fingers ready to go, checking what's in his PayPal account. Yeah. Now, we love you, Emil. We're going to be doing the auction in just a little bit. All right. Alan S. in the UK. Wow, Silver. Mark Merrow. Yeah, WWF Turnbuckle. Wow. So he wants uh, Mark Merrow. And then... Uh, okay. That's a weird thing. And then thing. Wild Man, former IC champ on the bottom. Thank you. <laughs> Janelle Anselmo goes, the hint is a meal wins them all. <laughs> <laughs> Actually had that, okay. but again, yeah. Because you know what, they were like the LJN, so you used to be able to have dream matches, you know. <laughs> WWE had already switched to Hasbro's. Yes. Go. So if you ever wanted to see Johnny B. Bad go over on 1987 Hulk Hogan, mm -hmm. you could do it with those figures. We're talking off camera; they haven't seen it yet, but we're getting to the good stuff, the action figures, in just a bit. Next up, we got Chon Tenderson. In Yonkers, New York, I'm a bad man, just okay. signature in red. Rip. You want to just start bringing some of that closer? <clears throat> oh, these are the auction. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so this is probably the coolest uh, live auction that we've had yet. And I, are we gonna start it now and we're still gonna let orders come in? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so guys, this is how this is going to work. We have an awesome auction up for grabs, all these different items, and here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna hold one up, you're gonna set the timer. What are we gonna do, two minutes, three minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes per item. So we're gonna spend three minutes per item and you're just gonna talk about it, riff about it. Here we have the WWF Magazine Breakout Sable on the cover. Mark Merrow and Sable in the behind. And uh, it's a little awkward holding this up, I'm not mm. gonna lie. <laughs> but anyway, this is the first magazine that's up for grabs. $50 each, start the clock now, especially for this one. Let's get this one out of the way. <laughs> $50. This, what year was this? This was August of 1998. Great magazine though. At the time, this is when they were also releasing the Raw magazine. And so there's a cover story about you guys. This was the infamous getting power bombed by Sable. Yeah. Much talked about yes. to this day. Any thoughts you'd like to share about that or? Well, you know, many people say that that ruined my career. Uh, wrestlers that were, that were friends and stuff and looking mm -hmm. back and thinking about, but here's the thing. I was on a guaranteed contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got paid the same whether I win, lose, draw, or anything. So I got paid the same every single week. Yeah. Realize we're a married couple. Yeah. Let me be the part, guy that builds her up and makes her the superstar because they're backing up the Brinks truck to our house at the time. Yeah. Her merchandise is selling only second to like Stone Cold at that time, you know? Yeah. And uh, so the more popular we can get her, even though if I'm the fall guy, I'm still gonna make it the same amount of money. Yeah. I have no ego there, you know? Yeah. So that's You're why. You're a businessman. Yeah, it was yeah. a business. All right, so, well then screw Emil it. Menard Let's hold it up. What's that, my friend? Emil Menard's in at 50. All right, Emil Menard is in at 50. I'm just seeing that now, but I think we're gonna go higher with this. So Emil, get ready to spend some more. So this is the August 1998 edition of the WWF Magazine. Mark is gonna sign it for you and you can take it home. You just gotta beat 50 bucks. Can I see 55 from anybody? I wonder if Emil will ever get bored and just start outbidding himself. Like maybe he's specific, because you know, if you ever notice he has specific strategies that he does. Sometimes he'll come in at a higher number, but then some nights he feels like playing. So he goes, eh. So uh, Emil's in at 50 bucks. And again, auction winners, send your PayPal to 80sWrestlingPicks at gmail.com. we got a lot of cool items to get to. We're going to get all the magazines out of the way first. 55, can I see it? Yeah, you had mentioned how a lot of guys talk about how that ruins your career, but now it's just the most common thing. I mean, they'll have Nia Jax go into the Royal Rumble and lay out five or six guys. Their careers aren't over. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of silly when people still talk like that. All right, $50 still. We got about 25 seconds left. And again, guys, I know there's a delay, but I'm looking at the clock that's in front of me. So if anybody wants to come in, right now Emil Menard has about 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Congratulations, Emil Menard. $50, he doesn't want to personalize, right? Just a signature? Oh, just a signature. Okay, okay. just a signature Any for a color? meal. I would say uh, red. Red? Red would stand out. You're kidding. You actually had Shaylin Rivera. Uh, she just came in? Yeah, because of the delay, she's actually on. Oh, all right, well. Ready, guys. But that literally just came in after we called it, right? Yeah. yeah. After you said it, but to their live video because of the delay, you were still counting down. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so. All right, she's got it. She's got it? Yeah, I told her, yeah, Emil, I got another magazine for her. All right, Emil. So, and that's the thing. Emil's a friend of ours. He understands. So, uh, Shaylin, congratulations. You have it at 60 bucks. Then that's the way it works. Emil, those, there's going to be another magazine for you. Uh, so now Emil, you know, now his ego is a little hurt. So now Emil, that was like a little eye of the tiger. That was, that was the non-title match. Bit higher. We're going to get to the title match uh, in just a little bit, but we're still not quite there yet. Another magazine, Trouble in the Jungle. Right. With, oh, we're going to do that first? Okay. All right, so we're holding off on the auction for a second? Yep. All right. Yep, we got our 
flag here from Carter Cole. We're doing it on the fly. Yeah. Just Emil Menard says, I am a true gentleman. Thank you, Emil. No, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I've just never had my auction interrupted before. <laughs> oh, that's not there anymore. So the middle is no, I'm still seeing it, Shannon Rivera. Unless I'm trying to reply to what it says right there. Oh, it's like All right, well, you guys can figure that out on your end because now I'm very confused. <laughs> of course, now over here, the WWE encyclopedias are being signed. Well, I could still do the auction while this is going yeah, on. As well. All right. Yeah, all right, so the next item up for grabs, The Trouble in the Jungle, WWF Magazine, September of 1997. So this was the build-up. Uh, is Sable looking to leave the wild man behind? It's $50. Opening bid, we're looking for it. More ways than one. Yeah, I, you know. <laughs> I'm glad you said it, you know. And this is Carter Cole's encyclopedia. So $50 is the opening bid we're looking for mm -hmm. on this one. Johnny, you bid anywhere here. Okay. I'm saving the best magazine for last, though. Don't worry. But right now we're looking for $50 for the September 1997 WWF magazine. Emil, come back. <laughs> $50. Let's see. Oh, this is when they were putting the trading cards in every magazine, which was pretty cool to see. I had a subscription as a kid, but then I think I switched to Raw around this time because I was like 15. So I, had, I couldn't have two subscriptions. I had to pick one. $50, Emil Menard. All right. He's, he's still playing risky. You know, he might come in. <clears throat> excuse me. He might come in and, and get taken out at the last second again, like he did last time. But all right, Emil Menard's on the board with $50. He's taking himself out. It's about 20 seconds. I should have stayed in college. $50, Emil Menard. It's 20 seconds after you had it. Okay, well, I mean. I, That's what people are saying. All right. So. $50 for Emile Menard. Can someone come in with 55 or higher? So I see two minutes on his phone, so it's really only a minute and 40. And so there's going to be a delay regardless, is what I'm saying. If you want to go to three minutes. No, no, go to two minutes. No, we're three minutes for each item. No. Just go 20 seconds out. That's what I'm saying. If you want to go to three minutes and 20 seconds, that'll be three minutes on there. That's their no, yeah. No, call it at three minutes. But don't announce the winner. Give them 20 seconds. Post and then uh, and we'll say who's the last person who's the last twenty seconds. All right. Well, let's see what happens right now. Currently, as it stands, Emil Menard <laughs> is at fifty dollars with thirty seconds left. This will be signed by Mark Merrow and sent to our auction winner. Can we see fifty-five? This is where Emil might just get bored and put in five-five. All right, we are down to five seconds. Now wait 20 seconds to call it? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm watching the live feed. So no, I, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but I think, I think we can be pretty safe on this one. Emil Menard, congratulations as the winner. Now someone will just prank me and throw in $400. No. <laughs> so there you go. Quality, well, good. All right, Emil Menard. I, I think we should just convince them to bid higher in the beginning because this is that's too much. It's already just watching down. Yeah. From now on, new rule. It's three minutes when I see it on the clock. All right, so now we are getting to... Oh, there's one more magazine left. And this one was actually... This is a happy one. This is Welcome to the Jungle. Welcome. This is the debut. Yes. Wild Man, Mark Merrow, and Sable claw their way to the top of the Federation. And this was the August 1996 edition of the WWF magazine. On the back, you have a Stridex advertisement with SummerSlam. And uh, Shawn Michaels talking about 
acne. So there you go. This was a very uh, good time for WWE business-wise, I guess, or WWF at the time. We're looking for $50 opening bid for this magazine. Three minutes on the clock. All right, who's coming in? Tommy Fierro, auction winners. Once again, please send your PayPal to 80sWrestlingPicks at gmail.com. Anthony D. Simone and Dennis, you're just back in time for auction. Put that money up. Let's see. $50 opening bid will be signed by Mark Merrow, <clears throat> him and Sable on the cover of the August 1996 WWF a magazine. Meal. $50 a meal once again. I'm anticipating a meal's got quite the collection. Oh, yeah. yeah, Emil, he's, he's, our, he's our number one fan. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. way to go, man. Ryan Martinez, $51. Oh, boy, Emil we're going to start 55. doing dollar bidding. Oh, Emil Menard, $55. $55. Wow. All right. Bobby Rydell, just walked in the door home. Thank you all. Lucky. No. <laughs> Good to see you, Bobby. Glad that you're uh, home safe. Welcome to the Jungle, August 1996, WWF Magazine. You probably even remember the day this photo was taken. Was this your first uh, set of promos for WWF? I, well, we got we got there in, I believe we got there in March of 96. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that when WrestleMania was? Cause we yeah, because you were yeah, we backstage did, promo. Yeah, so that had to be soon, you know, right after that. We shot those pictures. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a great time, because first of all, the fans are watching. Uh, and, and we knew it was. Yeah, a, this for a oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let me see this. Uh, there was. Um, let's see there. I don't know if this was one where they. they oh, had but this. there's a centerfold of you right there. Yeah, there we go. Um, a walk on the wild side. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Full cover story and everything. Personality profile. Right. Now, did they actually call you up for this stuff? They or? did. Oh, yes. good. Yeah, good. I remember doing this and. I couldn't remember the movie that I, was my favorite movie, and I said, uh, Die Hard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still your favorite movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? Um, Die Hard 2. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got 30 seconds left. Emil Menard at $55. Shailen Rivera just came in, said, thank you guys for the magazine. Can't wait to frame it. So I think Tommy was trying to get a hold of her, did he? It's good. All right, yeah. we're confirmed. So, yo, congratulations to you, Shaylin, because you're actually the first person in weeks to knock off a meal for something. All right. So. But right now, we're waiting still. Oh, we still got this. Uh, yeah, the 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Do we have a bid on this? Yeah, a uh, meal's at a 55. Meal. Yep. Okay, a meal. A meal's at $55. And sold to a meal Menard, $55. Black? Uh, Cutting one on this one. That was 55? Yep. Sold. Okay. It's, it, it's sold. There you go. When it's, you know, that's why I try to stress with them. It's a delay. We do the best we can. If you want to play, put that money up when it counts. We have an order that came in. Danielle Morgan in Maryland. Red, the wild man, Mark Merrow. Okay. WWF IC champion. Thank you guys for tuning in with us tonight and every single one of these that we do. We still have some more time left with Mark Merrow. If you'd like to share any memories or if you have any questions or just comments about the man's illustrious career. Of course, former three-time WCW World Television Champion, former WWE Intercontinental Champion. Great question. Just came in from David Rosenthal. Mark, given what happened in WCW soon after you left, NWO slash more reality-based angles, if your contract was up after NWO began, do you think you would have stayed and maybe asked for a gimmick change? No. I think it was time for me to go to the WWF. Mm -hmm. it, you know, like I said, I've always wanted to go there. Remember, three years earlier, Vince actually flew me up and I had dinner at his home three years before my contract was up. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. thought you guys had just spoken. No, no, the, no. So at that time, we had dinner together, and he said, what's it going to take to get you to come here? Now, my contract, my, my, my second contract was up with WCW, 
And I said, I want a guaranteed contract. He goes, we don't give out guaranteed yeah. contracts. And that's when we shook hands and we said, someday we're going to do business together. That's awesome. Three years later, my contract came up and he said, what's it going to take? I said, guaranteed contract. <laughs> and he gave it to me. That's great. And yeah, we did discuss that earlier on tonight. We're going to move along some more with our auction. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save this one for last. We'll start off with this one. I'm just double checking the price. All right. So this is... WWF grudge match and this is actually ironic for a couple of reasons I find, <laughs> I find this very humorous uh, talk about art imitating life or life imitating art so this is a two-pack WWF grudge match and this is lethal weapon Steve Blackman marvelous Mark Merrow the two action figures together this is awesome mint condition what a great guy grudge match but I do find it a yes. little entertaining because very entertaining he was uh, your sparring partner yes uh, <laughs> on the Nancy Grace show was it or it was on CNN uh, it was on CNN I believe yeah I think it was Nancy Grace I think it was yeah. the Nancy Grace show you yeah. guys got a little heated we got heated yes yeah. but uh, all, all forgiven water under the bridge uh, you know life goes on that's thing. awesome yeah. though. and, I, and yeah. I heard that he's a if I saw guy. him today we'd hug each other you know what I mean he's just a good guy that's awesome and, and, and I've heard yeah, we did but. go. We did go at it pretty heavily. That's great. And so his is... And my bro for all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I mean, come on. You're, you're a boxer. You obviously know how to take care of yourself. You know, we're, was about to turn pro before the accident. Be honest. Brawl for all. No one wants to get in there with Steve Blackman, right? Well, especially someone that could just take you down. Yeah. You know? So someone that was so profi proficient at taking you down, it didn't really stand to... It, it actually made a really boring match. Yeah. It was like, geez, yeah. when's this thing going to end, you know? Yeah. You know, because it's like that... Eight but, you know, it's funny. I had, I went total, remember, then I, then I had to uh, go against it. He got injured, so I had to get back in and go against um, Bradshaw. Yeah. Who was, you know, a big guy. Yeah, definitely. And um, we went to a three-round draw, and then we had to go into an extra round, you know? So out of the seven rounds I actually <laughs> fought in, I never got hit once. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, never got punched. Yeah, no, just, it's one of those concepts. I lost from being taken down, you know? It's one of those things that it, it was so bad that it's almost good because it's still being talked about all these yes, years later. Yeah. So we're going to actually start the clock on this item. I apologize. The WWF Grudge Match Jack's Pacific action figure set that includes this man, Marvelous Mark Merrow, along with the lethal weapon, Steve Blackman. So we're going to start that off. $75 <coughs> is what we're asking for. $75 for the opening bid. So who's going to be the first to put $75 on the board? <laughs> Danny Ash says, I always used Mero's Attitude Era theme song as my creator wrestler music on WWF Attitude on Nintendo 64. That had to be a That was a trip. cool song. Yeah. yeah. That... How many video games were you in altogether? Probably about you 10, know... right? I, I don't really know because I never played a video game. Oh, wow. I've never, I've never played video games ever. You know? It had to be a bit of a trip, though, just to find out that you were in one. Well, people tell me I've never seen it, you know? I've never seen the video game with me in it. I've never seen wow. someone play it. Or, oh, wow. Yeah, but I, I know kids that tell me they, 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 they could create my character or they could play my character or whatever, but I've never seen oh, it Oh, wow, that's wild. Vincente Garcia just came in at $75 for the opening bid. Antonio Collier said, I had these with three fire emojis. Yeah, I don't think I had this specific one, but I did have the Jack Very rare. figures. Yeah, well, because it's marvelous, and you Mark Merrill. Uh, um, and I, obviously, I'm going to be signing that, but then when Steve Blackman does an autograph sign, you ought to get him to sign that, too, whoever gets this. Yeah, that is... Uh, It'll be something that will, down the road, will be um, a good collector item. Yeah, if it already is. I mean, think about it. It was, what, 1999, right? 98, 99. Great oh. time. So Antonio Collier, oh, no, I'm sorry, Vincente Garcia with $75 is the opening bid. Once again, as per Tommy Fierro, auction winners, please send the PayPal to 80swrestlingpicks at gmail.com. Go to 80swrestlingcon.com, check out the full lining, full lineup, I'm sorry, for Virtual Mania 2 this Sunday. We got one minute left for someone to outbid Vicente Garcia. $75. David Rosenthal, direct that question, please, to the powers that be at 80s Wrestling. I'm sure they'll have an answer for you. While this is going on, we just got an order for Chris Quinn in Paris, Illinois. All right, Chris. 
silver. Silver to Chris, the marvelous one. All right, we got 25 seconds left. Vicente Garcia at $75. All right, Anthony D. Simone just came in at eighty dollars. Five seconds left. I'm gonna let it go a little bit, just because this was. This one I'll let go because that came in really close. All right, I'm gonna call it. All right. Sold, Anthony D. Simone, eighty dollars. All right, so uh, Anthony, I'm, I'm glad to see somebody who's been so active with us. Uh, don't worry, don't get me wrong, Emil, I love you too, but it's fun. It's fun to mix it up a little bit. So Anthony D. Simone, congratulations. That's a that's a great great score for you, my friend. All right, and this is uh, actually a figure that I had, and I was joking with uh, '80s Wrestling Con catering manager Ian Levy off camera <laughs> about how. You could mix these with the LJN figures from the 80s because they were both the rubber uh, giant size figures, whereas the Hasbros, they were a little too small to have fun with as a now, kid. I remember that. Uh, that was my first action figure, the first mm -hmm. one I ever did. And I remember they said to me, what pose would you like? I said, well, I'd like to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course not, right? What kind of pose is that? Yeah, it, it is interesting, because I mean, Hulk Hogan would be up, and then they just had you down. But you never see anyone pose like that. It is a very strange pose. But it's great, because you could DDT two other action figures. Yes, you could. So, I mean, you know, if there's worse poses that you could have had. So we're going to start this one off at... Uh, $75. This is the Johnny B. Bad action figure. What company made these? Oh, the uh, original Toy Makers of San Francisco. Actually, you'd probably be interested in this, talking about uh, Netflix. There's a show called The Toys That Made Us. Right. And there's an episode strictly dedicated to professional wrestling. Really? Figures. And they talk about, they actually interview the sales reps from the different companies and how they pitched Vince and then have WCW. So you'll actually maybe find out how you were made wow. in action figure form. You know, like, a quick story was that when these first came out, I think they were at Kmart. Okay, and they I were, I think. And I remember going to Kmart and seeing my action figure for the first time on the shelf and I bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled with this big grocery cart of all my action figures. Oh, that's so awesome. I, I was like, this is me. Yeah, <laughs> Ron Simmons told us that his wife did the same thing with the WCW magazine that had him on the cover as the champion. Right. She like she just bought them all up at every new cent she could get. He's like, yeah. I still got a bunch of them at home. And I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ron though, what a great guy. Oh, uh, he is. So we're looking for $75. We got two minutes left. Oh, Lex Luger had yes, the same he had pose. The same pose. This is the Gloob figure. He, he stole the my gimmick. The Gloob figure, there you go. <laughs> same mold, probably, oh, right? <laughs> this is San Francisco Toy Maker. Very, very interesting. So, all right, we are looking for $75 opening bid. And don't forget, if this doesn't go live at auction, Mr. Romero is still going to sign it, and it's going to be at the Wrestling Collector Superstore. Pro Wrestling Destination. So there's really no no loss here if it doesn't go tonight. We'd like to have somebody take it home tonight, though. But Mr. Merrow's sitting right here. He will sign it. You will be able to find it at the Wrestling Collector Store if it does not go. But we're not talking like that yet because we still have a minute left. And we're looking for that opening bid, $75. Oh, Kent Graham, $75. Look at that. Mixing it up. i got to tell you, you're bringing in a lot of, uh, a lot of new players to this auction game. John Jacobs just came in with a $75 matching. Now, Kent Graham's there first. I need to see 80, Jonathan, 80. At least 80, bare minimum. Right now, Kent Graham's holding at 75 until I see higher. 40 seconds left. Jonathan Jacobs just comes in at $80. Can I see 90? I mean, you could come in at 85 if you want, but I say let's make it exciting for the last 20 seconds. 85, Kent. Kent Graham at 85. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
All right, you got 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Sold to Kent Graham, $85. There you go. Mark Merrill is going to sign that for you. Congratulations, okay. Kent Graham. So this is a big night. We have three different auction winners. We have Shaylin Rivera earlier with the, with the uh, first magazine, Emile Menard uh, with the second magazine, and then our last winner, Anthony D. Simone, followed now by Kent Graham. So this is probably uh, the most diverse auction we've had yet, and we're not done quite yet. We're still taking some last-minute orders from Mark Merrow over at 80swrestlingcon.com. You have about, I think, what, five, ten minutes left to get those in. But now our final boxing gloves. auction item. These are Everlast boxing gloves that will be signed by the former Golden Gloves boxing champion. There's never such a thing as a former Golden Gloves champion. You're a champion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're a Golden Gloves champion. So Golden Gloves champion Mark Merrow, marvelous Mark Merrow during the WWF Attitude Era, Everlast boxing gloves. We're going to start these off at 100 bucks. 100 bucks, and these are going to be signed by Mark Merrow. Boxing gloves, $100. They will be signed by Mark Merrow. He'll even put Marvelous if you want him to. 100 bucks, come on. Who's going to be the first? This is where I think Emil just comes in and he's so angry. He's like, $3,000. <laughs> 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 Chris Quinn, 100. Ooh. Emil tied. Emil tied at 100. All right, so Emil, Emil 110. Let's see what's going on here. Everlast boxing gloves. This isn't any action figure stuff. These are the real deal. I'm not a fighter myself, but I mean. These are good gloves. Yeah. Yeah, these are nice. Can't go wrong. They're nice. going to be signed by Marvelous Mark yes. himself. Oh, no, I don't, you're not getting any ideas. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> Look, it wasn't my idea to hold up all the pictures of you and Sable. I'm sorry. No. 100 bucks. 125, Emile Menard. 125. Wow. So now, now, they're, now they're duking it out a little bit. <laughs> He's like, go long. Go long. All right, 125. Now, do you still do boxing workouts at all? Do you ever hit the bag? I or? don't. You know, with all the surgeries I've had on my shoulders, yeah. it's just too much trauma on my joints. Yeah. yeah. Do you miss it, though? Once a fighter, always a fighter? Uh, as far as yeah, I mean, yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I love watching the, the UFC fights. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. Emil Menard, well, Chris Quinn came in at 130. Emil Menard, 140. They're still, you know, they're like, all right, feeling each other out before they get nuts. <laughs> Kyle James says this is better than Raw again. Chris Quinn at 150. We still have over a minute left anyway, so this is getting good. <laughs> you may. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, what the hell? I ain't got you. Yeah. 160, Emil. I have to work tomorrow at 8:30. I, I can hang. Emil Menard at 160. 8:30 p.m. I was gonna say. Yeah, I ain't doing comedy in the morning. Come to my job. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Emil Menard with 160. Got about 50 seconds left. I'm going to give him a 10 second uh, delay there. Oh man, Emil, you know, Emil gets cocky. I can't tell if it's cocky or if it's a purpose, purposeful rope a dope scenario that he just lures these guys in. But he's at 160 right now. He probably got upset at how many different winners there were tonight. So he's now going to. Make up for it in the end. Chris Quinn says he's out. Thank oh, you, Chris. A lot of fun. Chris Dufano, $175. Let me see the phone. I'll throw another 10 seconds on there. I'm going to do it by your rules just because this got good. Chris Dufano's at 175 and 10. 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and sold to Chris Stefano at one seventy-five. I went to three twenty on the clock. Yeah, but right now you're still talking. All right, well, I can't control that. We've, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one seventy-five. I mean, we went from three minutes to three twenty to you know. I already called it for him. Uh, He's going to hear it. Chris Stefano is sold. Both of them? Yeah. Okay. 
at 175. Congratulations to all of our winners tonight. Chris Stefano, Emil, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling up. It's been Shaylin Rivera, one earlier, and Anthony D. Simone. Congratulations to all of you, all winners tonight. Do you want me to sign the other? Do you want me to sign this one, Johnny B. Bad? Or both Mark Merrill? Both Mark Merrill or? The one I just brought up, make sure you get shot up. Oh, no, no, I'm talking Tommy. Let's get back here. No, well, he's asking, he's about, asking about for this. the auction item That's for the, the club. This is Mark Merrill. Oh, there you go. 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. Have a last few. Call, last call. There you go. That's nice. All right, another order that just came in. Oh, he wants two David. So this is a redo? Okay. It's been signed already. No, it's fine. You want to add to David on there. Oh, add to David. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll David you. Rosenthal. Oh, Bubba John, long time no talk. Johnny B. Bad, he's pretty, so pretty. How you doing, Bubba John? It's been a while. Emil Menard says, I'm losing my touch, LOL. I don't know about that. You still wound up winning tonight. We just mixed it up a little bit, but good to see you, Emil. 80swrestlingcon.com for all of the upcoming signings. Virtual Mania 2 is live this Sunday. And we got Robert Williams, Encyclopedia and Chair. Oh, okay. Robert Williams, Encyclopedia and Chair. Lots of new fans tonight. Lots of uh, old friends rejoining us. We always love to see it. Don't forget about Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday. What a great lineup. We have Billy Gunn. Followed by Mosh and Thrasher, the Headbangers, D'Lo Brown, and of course, WWE Hall of Famer, Mark Henry. So that's going to be a great event this Sunday. Another thing that you don't see anymore nowadays, and that's a good thing as well. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, there's a party as a fan that selfishly misses it, and then you go, <laughs> no, but it's true. But then you, you, know, you grow up and you watch this stuff, uh, you know, you see the YouTube clips and you go, oh, like, yeah. you know, and there really isn't a need for it, you know, but when you're 16 years old and you're yelling, you see, the, oh, remember the Rock and Mick Foley? Oh, yeah. Oh, that, brutal. That was. was brutal. Uh, but, you know, again, that was something that even watching as a kid, we went, yeah, this is too much. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, there is, there is a level that mm. it gets, a, it gets to be a little too much. So again, progress is a good thing in a lot of ways, but. And early on, it was like, oh, man, I missed that. Dennis Grinnell says, thank you, Mark, for taking time for us fans. Robert Elwell, Dennis, Mark, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you guys all for, for tuning in tonight. Uh, man, we, we got, boy, a lot of stuff tonight. Huh? A lot of stuff. That was good. A lot That's of stuff. Really good. And uh, a lot of great comments. And like I said earlier, you know, you could tell that you've really had a special bond with all these people over the years. So that's always awesome to see. Uh, again, it didn't feel so much as... You know, oh wow, that's Mark Monroe, Johnny Bad. It was like, oh hey, yeah, I met him here at this airport, and he said this, and then uh, the person kept talking about uh, who was the guy that was sober for two years that worked at Magic Kingdom. I forgot the name that came in, but she kept asking questions right, and saying, right. you know, so yeah. it was just really awesome to see that you have a connection. Tommy Fierro, thank you everyone for a great signing tonight. We will see you this Sunday for Virtual Mania Two, all day long signing with Billy Gunn, Mark Henry, D'Lo Brown, and the Headbangers. Order now at 80swrestlingcon.com. Don't forget, we also announced tonight, November 22nd, virtual signing with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That's going to be huge. You can check out all the upcoming virtual signings that we have in September after Virtual Mania 2, 80swrestlingcon.com. All the people coming in. Linda Fierro, another great show. Oh, Colt Nahit. I'm sorry, my screen was cracked. Colt Nahirny. Loved when you busted up Stone Cold's lip at Ooh, King of yeah. the Ring. It was a move that we did many times before, where mm -hmm. I flip over his back and, I, and then I kick my knees, my, my, my boots up in his armpits and flip them backwards. Well, what happened was when, my, when I kicked him through his armpits, he was looking down and my boot actually kicked him in the mouth. Oh. And uh, 
But it's funny because uh, I was on his podcast and he attributed that to him coming up with uh, Austin 316 because he had to go to the hospital so it had oh, extra wow. time to hear what Jake said about the uh, yeah that's the great Bible verses and also kind of ironic in a weird way because uh, his tag team partner Brian Pillman did that to your eyebrow yes, as you pointed yeah, out earlier yeah, so kind of everything kind of comes yeah. uh, full circle there <laughs> so 80sWrestlingCon.com all right, so guys, I believe we have about a minute left for you to get those orders in, but if you don't have anything else to say, I just want to catch up with these last couple of comments. Uh, Mark, thanks for all the great work with the motivational speeches. Yes, if you'd like to plug. You know, I, I just want to say something to everyone out there, you know, through all the years, 14 years as a wrestler, this is my 15th year on the speaking circuit, and... I, I couldn't do it without all the support out there and the people out there and you know and, and, and people that have written to me that said that I have helped them. You have no idea how you have blessed my life and made my life so incredible, man. Life is precious and so are you. And guys, we all go through adversity in life. You know, your current trial is your future testimony. Don't ever give up because life is precious and so are you. Awesome, awesome. I don't think I could uh, follow that much better. But thank you for such a great night, great time, all the interactions with the fans, all the great stuff on social media. It was such a pleasure to meet you. And like I said, I want to see Johnny B. Bad, the manager in AEW. Oh, you never know. If you're listening out there, Mr. Khan, Johnny <laughs> B. Bad's a bad man. And, and for all those people out there that maybe I can come out to your school, your church, your corporation, a community night, please visit my, my website, Think Pause, and Pause is P-O-Z as in zebra, thinkpause.org, and I hope to see you soon. Wow. I, again, can't really follow that. I'm just going to say Virtual Mania 2 live this Sunday. On behalf of 80s Wrestling Con, this has been another great Monday Night Virtual. My name is Ryan Marr. See you this Sunday, Virtual Mania 2. I'm going to be live. Good night. Bye-bye. So much fun. Thank you so much. Man.